Whakatakia. Whakataka te hau ki te uru, whakataka te hau ki te tonga, ki a mā kina kina ke uta, ki a mā tara tara ki tai, e hi a ki ana, te atakura, e tio, e huka, e hauhu, tihei mauri ora. Koutou katoa, nga mai ki te hui o te Pororo Amoa, the Planning and Environment Committee e tenei rā. Um, lovely to see your smiling faces and those of you online as well. Um, so just let us know if you need to leave the meeting and we will have morning tea at 10.30. And I'm setting myself a goal of 12.30 finishing this meeting. If you can beat it, there'll be a chocolate fish for you at the next meeting. So so three minute, three minute speeches, three minute speeches will be awesome. Right. <laughs> Yes, that, that's a good piece of advice. Right, um, now, have we got any apologies? Councillor Matthews, it's good to see you online. I know you're not feeling well, so thank you for coming along. Uh, is the Mayor? Oh, it's online. Okay. What? Oh, yeah. Are we, are we missing? Are we missing? Off. Count, oh, no, Councillor Paul for lateness. Uh, Councillor Fitzsimons was supposed to be coming online. No, no, she's here, right? Anyone else? Oh, no, Councillor O'Neill was supposed to be online too. Okay, so just those, just that one from Councillor Paul. Is that all? All right, I move that. Can I have a seconder, please? Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Can we please vote now? Councillor Rush, you need to vote. Come yeah, yeah. on, I declare the motion carried. Uh, conflict of interest declarations, councillors. Okay, thank you. And now for the confirmation of the minutes. Um, I move those. Can I have a seconder? Thank you, Deputy Mayor. So we can vote. Council phone. Koumana, right, that's carried and no items not on the agenda. So now we move into public participation. A warm welcome to our participants. Patrick Morgan from the Cycling Action Network, a warm welcome to you. Kia ora tato. Um, it's good to be here, good to see you and hello to everyone at home. Um, today I'm going to talk about, about numbers, about people, and about action. So we've been talking about improving transport for everyone in our community for as long as I can remember. Um, first, let's be clear, this is not just about serving people who ride bikes. This is about improving things for uh, bus, bus travellers as well, and for everyone in our community who wants to get around. Um, this morning, I rode down the, the new... Uh, part that we've built in, in Newtown, and good to see a lot of people using it, people dropping their children at school there, so thank you for that. We've got momentum now. Uh, the council has, has approved Panaki Ponake uh, to Atakura, the Climate Action Plan, and we all know that um, road safety is really one of our, I can't think of a higher priority for protecting people in New Zealand. Uh, what we're doing today, it aligns well with all of those things. A couple of numbers. I know you've all read um, 800 pages of submissions and reports. 638 people and organisations had their say on this. I'm astounded by that number. And even more impressed by, I think the count was around 75% of those submissions were in support. I think that's a strong mandate here. Uh, flicking through them, I didn't know maybe two thirds of the people who had taken the time to have their say on this important matter. So. Um, this is, this is bigger than bike advocates, this is your community saying to you, we want you to go ahead with this. 
You heard last week from public submissions. I'll just touch on a couple. Um, uh, Debbie from Kaori, she wanted to, to stay alive, keep me safe on my way um, between Karori and, and town. Andrew Jacobs wants to, um, he wants to cycle with his niece to the Botanic Gardens, something he can't currently do. These are trips that will be made once we keep extending uh, Panaki Ponake. You heard from people from Karori, people from Thorndon who wanted this to happen. I talked a little bit about Botanic Gardens access. I know um, for many people this was really important to them, and I, I agree. There's ways of improving access to the Botanic Gardens um, by better management of the parking space that's there. I uh, would also note that really close to this route, just on Ballantrae Place, there's more than 100 car parks available to the public there, a whole bunch more on the terrace, and as we know, as um, both the Regional Council and the City Council makes bus trips easier, that's a viable choice for more people. In the last couple of weeks, we've seen news about storm surge in Lowry Bay, slips in Stokes Valley, getting closer to home, Waitstown and Karori. This is in every ward for councillors in the city. Um, there's really no reason to delay on, on climate action. And we know that Wellington needs to do its bit. We've already committed to doing our bit to lowering emissions. This is what climate action looks like in 2022. And I want you, when you go home tonight and, and your partner or your child asks you, you know, what did you do today? You can look at them in the eye with pride and say, today we took a small step to doing our bit to making, to uh, addressing climate justice in New Zealand. Um, don't ever forget about that. With, you know, seven years to half emissions, there's really no reason to delay. I think you'll hear from people who will say, let's talk about it more. Well, you know, you're probably fed up about hearing from me on this. We've been talking about this for decades. I think this is the time for action, the time for momentum. Uh, the government wants to help you. This week, the government announced reshaping streets, giving you more tools, and I want to see the detail of that, to reshaping our streets so they work for everyone in our community. Really looking forward to seeing that and uh, giving your staff um, and your contractors more tools to go ahead and get the job done. So just in closing, this is really about momentum. The council said this is what the council will do, take climate action, uh, build a, a cycling network, improve the way the buses work in our city. Now is your chance to do what you said you'd do. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions, councillors? Thank you, Patrick, and you have been stalwart for so long on this issue. Um, I'm just wondering if I can ask you a question about the balance of the timing for the bus lane clearway on Bowen Street. Yes. Would you be, uh, what's your view? Um, I know you know we're not making it a full-time thing. Um, I think, yeah, we, we could possibly be prepared to extend the hours. There might be an amendment to that effect, but what is your view about about how that's being proposed in the paper? Yeah, I think it came through in the submissions and, and the public speakers who said that let's not just privilege people who work nine to five. There's all sorts of people in our community who make trips at all times of day. Um, our preference is 24 seven. It's more legible. It's easier for people to remember. Um, I, th I think also that we're going to see efforts by some to chip away at the progress the council is making on Panaki Ponaki by uh, clipping off an hour here, an hour there. Um, I think you want to resist that. This is 2022. This one is very straightforward. I don't see anyone really picking a big fight over this. Let's get on with it and um, do what the council said it would do. So I would be in favour of extending the clearway hours to make both bus and bike trips easier for more people in our community. Thank you, Councillor Rush. Uh, thanks, Patrick. Um, do you think we, we could actually route the uh, cycleway through the botanical gardens rather than along Tinakui Road? Yeah, if you want all hell to break loose, I think that's a great idea. I think... Um, if that's, not a, that's still not a sensible answer. Can you please uh, give yeah, me a so sensible answer? The botanical answer? gardens are, are really a special place in Wellington for people who get around on foot. And uh, putting bike lanes through the botanic gardens... Uh, sorry, am I clear on the meaning of your question? Maybe I misunderstood. 
No, no. Well, no, it was no. a serious question. There are plenty of, um, you know, uh, parks and gardens around the world that have got bike paths through them. Sure. It was, a, it was a serious question. Okay. I mean, there is one route that's available, which is through the Rose Gardens and along Kinross Street and down, uh, I think, Bolton Street. But I think, um, you know, the council's been really clear that um, Panaki Ponaki is about making trips available for um, not just the strong and fearless, people who, all, who, who currently ride, but to attract people who would like to ride. And I think um, a less direct route that goes along Bolton Street, I don't think it really, it, don't, it doesn't really fit with that. So also, um, there's a bunch of businesses in Thorndon that they should benefit from having their customers and people who access those businesses, uh, making it easier for them to access by bike. So. I'd always encourage you to think about those main routes, those desire lines where people want to travel. And usually that's... Where the cars go. Where people want to go. Well, it's where people go. Yeah. Let's focus where on the cars go. people. Yeah, exactly. Thanks, Patrick. Thanks, Sean. Sorry, Mayor Foster, then Councillor Day. Yeah, Patrick, uh, look, thank you. Um, question I've got is about the downhill side of it. Um, I, I get the uphill side. I mean, I, this is a route that I ride um, reasonably often. Um, and the... Uh, you know, being passed close by vehicles going uphill. But when you're going downhill, you're going generally as fast as, sometimes faster than the, the vehicles. And I just don't see an issue there. Um, can you give us any comments from your perspective on that? Sure. Again, we know that um, Panaki Ponake is about attracting more people to ride bikes in Wellington. And we know that um, for people who are a bit nervous about sharing with traffic, a protected separate bike lane is what's required to get them riding bikes. So we've got to be a bit careful not to generalise from our own experience and say, it works for me. This is about serving everyone in Wellington, not the people who are just currently riding. Um, I take your point, though, that traffic speeds are more similar to bike speeds downhill. That's also a good argument for, for calming traffic. So uh, you might want to think about, for example, 30 or 40 kilometre speed limits. Where well, well, I don't want to be slowed down too much. Beg your pardon? I don't want to be slowed down on the bike too much either. <laughs> sure. Sorry, uh, still a long list. Councillor Day, then Councillor Condy. Okay. No, okay, Councillor Condy. Thank you, Patrick. Um, I'm considering moving an amendment that would extend the hours of the shared bus and bike lane to 6am to 10am, but I've had some fe feedback from staff who are worried that um, we don't actually have any parking wardens who are working at 6am. So we'll, have, we'll be able to have a static camera in the lane, which would be able to issue tickets after the fact, but we wouldn't be able to tow anybody out of the lane until after 7 a.m. Um, obviously, that you know people get kind of grumpy when you can't enforce rules that we have there. So I was just wondering if you have any thoughts about that. Sure. Um, you know, I know it's the council's role to its governance rather than management, and I, I won't be surprised to hear this discussion getting into the detail of, of managing um, parking in clearways. Uh, it's good to hear that the fixed camera is on its way. Um, your hard-working parking staff are really uh, under a lot of pressure. They, they can't be everywhere at once. And I know from experience that um, there can be a significant delay in, in reporting safe parking and when it's actually enforced. So, you know, I'd welcome the council having better tools to manage that. Um, again, I'd say that's a good argument for a 24-7 clearway. But I would say um, there's nothing like uh, some some heavy management of a new clearway, a new biking area, people pretty soon get the message that this is not a place for them. But I'm sure, you know, your comms people will be all over that as well. This is going to happen throughout the city. Um, you know, let's not look for reasons not to do something. Let's figure out how is, what's the best way to manage that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Patrick, and for all your work. Really appreciate it. Thank you, councillors. Good luck today. Thank you very much. Now, a warm welcome also to Richard Murcott from the Thorndon Residents Association. Sorry that we made a mistake over your attendance at hearings, but as I said to you last night, I'm, it's probably better that you're here today. So thank you. Thank you very much. Um, good morning, everybody. So I'm here as the chair of the Thorndon Residents Association this morning, um, and the association has a lot of experience dealing with traffic resolutions. Um, and I've got the privilege of representing uh, our submission. You have that submission. It's only four pages. Um, and it was um, it's based on the mere 21 days we had uh, to canvas residents and businesses. And um, it weaves together um, 
what we harvested via verbal communications, our website, and a, a public meeting we convened here in Thorndon. The, the four-page submission is, is, is an easy read. It's got three parts. You've got an introduction section which outlines the significant concerns. I'll run through them quickly. Um, there's discussion on some wider impacts and uh, a little summary. Let's skip to those significant concerns. There's six of them. They, they range right at the top. We've got the failure to build a common understanding and therefore um, not carrying all your constituents with you on this one. Um, the online sub submission process, uh, followed by this traffic resolution, is something we've never seen before in any traffic resolution, and half the material attached to the report, in our opinion, has nothing to do with the traffic resolution. It's a very technical thing we should be dealing with. What's all this demographic stuff? Is it saying anything? I can't hear anything. Filling up the space. No, I can't hear anything either. Oh, this is ridiculous. So, so so we'll it's we'll um, pause the time and just make sure that... If Make sure all the councillors can hear what you've got to say. Do you know what's going on? Um, Sorry, point. Madam Chair. Oh. Madam yes. Chair, could we ask Richard just to repeat himself for the last minute? Um, because there might be something that, that we need re repetition over. So you didn't hear the concerns that Richard's raised? Uh, probably from about a minute in. Yeah, we had like the, the start of... The first concern. Oh, that list. Sorry, Richard, could you do the list again? But we'll make sure that you've got. Yeah, that thank you. Right. Okay. Um, they're, in, they're in the report, of course, in the submission, but I'm trying to summarise them here. First was the failure to build a common understanding and carrying the, your, all your constituents with you um, due to the insufficient time devoted to resolving objections, um, not allowing everybody to make and evolve decisions that impact them the, the uh, doing it to us sort of feeling rather than doing it with us um, sort of feeling um, and the sort of a feeling about take it or leave it sort of thing and a, and a bit of a win-lose approach. The second point was about um, significant concern is about removal of on-street parking. Um, the third was the, the very compressed timelines for a traffic resolution. We've got experience of traffic resolutions and they're never done Remember, this just opened four weeks ago. We've never seen a complex traffic resolution go through the process so quickly. It's being rushed. Number four is lack of transparency arising from the piecemeal approach, isolating what happens to the rest of the network. And a classic example is the next connected piece of street is Glenmore Street. We've got no idea how that's going to uh, work. And, and the two really need to be considered together. They're both beside the botanical gardens. Uh, number five was... Um, concerns about the business case not stacking up completely. Because of exclusion of analysis related to property asset Im impacts, business interests, or even wider traffic implications, and there's people who've got concerns about how the statistics don't add up for them and stack up for them. And number six on the list was um, the, online, the online submission process, which is a We've never experienced that type of thing on any other traffic resolution, and it's all about demographics and stuff like that, which we feel has nothing to do with the technicalities of reallocating the road space. That's what this was meant to be about. So why we, you know, why we got that report stacked up with all that stuff? Now I'll move on to the the other part uh, of the report, where we've got um, just four comments on wider impacts. Uh, essentially, it comes down to concerns about uh, the potential for congestion. Um, and there's a question asked in particular, why does the council need to trial what happens in Bowen Street when we had an experience of eight months of what happens when you reduce the road to two lanes? And that was due to infrastructure being uh, repaired from Whitmore Street and up into Bowen. Number two is a bus boarding. Um, there's concerns about unnecessary impacts arising from that. Number three is related to car park, losing car parks, um, and the submission has a list of significant impacts that arise from that. And number four is, is speed. It's, um, the association strongly supports traffic calming, uh, so the idea of speed reduction, um, which is item 17 in the report, which is very weakly supported in the report, um, speed reduction is a fantastic idea. Signage, better signage, and significant awareness improvement for all road users are the sorts of things that um, the, the, the issues that the feedback um, to us is reflecting. Um, 
In summary, I mean, the summary's there in the document for you to read, so please have a look at that. Um, what could you do today? Uh, please ensure that all the valid concerns that have been submitted um, and issues are addressed. Normally, in a traffic resolution at this stage, we would have seen, had time to go through the report, all the people submitting would have had time to have another conversation with the traffic engineers, we'd, be in a, we'd have another month before we'd be in front of the Regulatory Processes Committee. This traffic resolution kicked off on the 5th of July, and um, it, 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 it harvested, it brought to the attention a whole lot of Wellingtonians and beyond became aware of what was happening here for the first time for the first time. This is not something that's been going on for 18 months or two years for a large number of your stakeholders. And uh, when they, st and, and it was very apparent at the public meeting, it was, you know, town hall style meeting we had um, here in the suburb, which a lot of people thought the council should have convened that. We, the community, did it ourselves and we invited officers along, which we very much appreciated uh, that help, but, um, that's the level of consultation that we were looking for and the resolution of the issues arising. Not just, you know, that was just merely a, an information harvesting session. It took uh, an hour and a half to do that, just to ask questions. But it highlighted just how many people didn't know what the potential impacts were. Um, these are all valid concerns and um, Please, we ask you, if you could put on the spectacles of the people who are sitting outside of the process looking in, in the community, and understand it from their perspective, and please either dial back some implementation issues or delay them if those objections are currently not resolved. Um, we've got time to do this transition. We need to do the transition. I mean, we, really can, we don't even know how the association submit and submission is, is evaluated. Are we for or against? Of course we're for change. We have to do things together as a city, but we've got to get the balance right. And that's what is concerning a lot of people here, that you haven't got a mandate yet to make some of these changes. Um, evolve the solutions where both the people and the city can thrive because you've designed it that way for residents, for business, for everybody. That's what we would like. There are concerns in the report too that um, uh, I'll highlight for you, like saying that uh, we've been, the Residents Association has been consulted since um, December uh, last year. This was one true. What, there was a meeting with a representative of the association in December last year where the report back to the association was there was no detail available yet in December last year. We didn't come to see any detail until about um, March, and in March set up a, helped set up a special little task group just to focus on the Tinikuri Road and the top end of Bowen Street. The association had no sort of anything to work with, like a traffic resolution, until this traffic resolution started up, this formal consultation process. And only then do we have a process to go out to the wider community. So you see, um, heaps of assumptions are made. There's between items 27 and 1931 in this report on engagement and consultation, is hardly relevant to the traffic resolution. It didn't kick off until the 5th of July. Um, there are, um, other things in here that are just don't stack up for us, and um, but we, we've got no opportunity to um, to fix them, right? There's no more there's no more consultation, and that's one of the big concerns. Thank you. Thank you very much for all your work on this, Councillor Condy. You've got the question. Thank you. I was wondering if you could just speak to um, the changes that have been made to the residents parking in the area and how that's going to affect um, and accommodate the residents. One of the concerns, yeah, well, there, there are changes made to, because of the removal of parking in Tinakori Road, well, that um, now more space is being made in adjacent streets. The big concern of the association is, this is just the beginning for Thorndon. Remember, the bike network plan has several other routes through the suburb. We're probably the most affected suburb in the city 
We've yet to do the rest of Tinakori Road down to Hill Street. We've got Molesworth Street, Mulgrave, That's when he does it. and uh, Murphy and Park Street, all to be done yet. When If parking's going to re be removed to the extent it has in Tinakori Road, all down all those streets, the ripple effect will be right through the suburb. We're already up to our eyeballs, you know, trying to accommodate what is already an intensely populated suburb. We have twice the density of a similar suburb in Auckland, for example, just in Thorndon, we're a very densely populated little suburb. And for all sorts of good reasons, we still need to have vehicles. We may not use them all the time, but that's the way we've got to evolve out of that, okay, but it can't do it overnight. So there's gonna be lots of concerns. And of course, the removal of the car parks in Bowen Street, we're, having, we're wondering what's gonna to happen to all the commuters, where they're gonna go hunting. And when, you, when the people wanna visit the town belt, Officers said to us, yeah, well, like we've heard this morning, let's go and park down on the terrace or let's take the cable car up to the top. That doesn't work for Nana and her walker or, you know, the kids and all the prams and all the t picnic stuff. You've got to get closer to the Rose Garden, closer to the Begonia House. Not going to be walking up from, uh, you know, the car park on the terrace. or doesn't, doesn't work. And that kind of aspects of the consultation or even the parking for the hotels that uh, the patrons of Park and Bowen Street hasn't been consulted on completely. That's the kinds of concerns we've got, um, the, the big ripple effect. Right, any other questions? No, I think you've been very clear. Richard, again, thank you. I know you've done an enormous amount of work as, along with the rest of the Thorndon community, so thank you. Yeah. Thank you very thank much. You. Right, Andrew Lenson. Warm welcome to you. Good to see you again. Good to be here. So you can start now. Uh, awesome. Thanks very much. Uh, Marina Koto, councillors and, and um, other officers and so on. Um, firstly, thanks very much for putting me in. I'm, apologies I couldn't make the previous um, meeting around this. Uh, but I just want to start off by really acknowledging the mahi and the work put in by both councillors and especially officers. Uh, around this traffic resolution um, that we're discussing today. I mean, it's been a lot of, as, as people said, it's a lot of big change and it's a lot of change quickly. And I actually really support that and really um, want to express my acknowledgement of that. Um, but really, I'm just here primarily to encourage councillors to be to be brave and to be bold in their decisions they make here. You have a real, real chance to make some strong change here. We know that we need to make the changes for climate change, for active streets, for our growing population. And this is not the time to be kneecapped by a few car parks and a part-time clearway. You know, we, we don't have the time to screw around and let people park there off, off when it's not peak hours. You know, why do commuters get to be safe when mums and dads like biking around town if their kids during the day or on the weekends don't get to be. You know, it's, it's just kind of reinforcing the privilege of people who can bike at peak times. Um, and as we all know, sort of, for lack of a better word, half assing it um, does not lead to real change. We need to make change quickly. We need to commit to it and we need to encourage and allow this change. And yes, some people will be unhappy about it, but you're never going to get the whole community with you. And part of being in council and being our leaders is to acknowledge that and to make change that's best for all, even if there are some people who dissent. Um, we know, for example, that densely populated suburbs, parking is an outdated privilege that we can no longer maintain. There is no scope to park outside your house in Thorndon. I'm sorry, it's just, it's just not the way that cities work and it's not the way they should ever have worked. Um, so really, I'm just here to please encourage you to think about remove this part-time clearway. It's not helping matters. You might make some people happy in the short term, but the long-term consequences, you're just going to kneecap the bike network. And if you really are committed to, to this change, then we need to make these bold decisions and we need to break a few eggshells along the way. So I'll leave it there, but thank you. Thank you very much. A very clear submission. Councillor Rush for the question. Thanks, Andrew. Um, where do you live in Wellington? 
Not and sure how long have you lived there? I'm sure, not sure that's relevant, actually. Well, if we're talking about people who have families that have been living in suburbs for 20, 30 years and parking no, on the no, road, no, 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 no. Can and this please, gentleman is telling them that they have, are privileged, then can I think it's appropriate that I can ask question? how long he has lived where he is. Andrew deserves to have a voice just as much as anyone else. If you Was there a question there? But, but Councillor Rush, this is not... We are all Wellingtonians and people are all allowed to have a say. Why would you call people who park on the road privileged? Thank you. Because you're storing your private vehicle on the public road that's meant to be used for transport. Like, it's inherently a privilege to do that. And it's not one that we can maintain with the, cli the climate crisis and the side of our city. It's, it's that simple. Okay, if we all banned cars... In 2050, I didn't say ban cars. The climate would look like. He didn't say that. I said if we did. He's talking about a climate well, I'm not suggesting crisis. That. Thinks that bikes are going to actually be the answer, and I'm suggesting they aren't. No, look, I, I think Councilor this is. Councillor Rush, you're badgering. The, yeah, yeah. The I think it's just, it's just. You respect. guys are badgering uh, me, actually. Councillor, I am going to uphold the objection. Okay, we need to treat our submitters with respect. All right, I think. Maybe a better way of putting it. Andrew, can you please explain to me how a cycle mm -hmm. network will have an impact on climate change? Sure, by reducing the number of private vehicles using the roads, we therefore use less energy to travel around and we have less dependencies on limited resources. Because even if we have electric cars, it still takes a hell of a lot of energy to make those and we don't have that going into the future. So we need to find more efficient ways of travelling. And the people who can't drive as we well know, will be benefited by cycleways because they'll have access to parking still and there'll be less people on the road to compete with. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? Yeah, and those who can't ride a bike because of disability or age or desire? Will benefit from being, there being less cars on the road. That's right, freeing it up for other people. Andrew, thank you so much for your very clear submission. Really appreciate you taking the time to come in. Thanks very much. Thank you. Now, Tanya Ali, are you ready now to do your submission? A warm welcome to you. Kia ora. Yes, I am. Fantastic. It's great. Thanks that you're so much here. for inviting me to join into this. It's it's um a privilege to join. Um, it's lovely to see everyone's faces. Um, some of you I know, some of you I don't. But yeah, I just want to thank you so much. Um, I appreciate this opportunity to come and speak with you. So yeah, kia ora koutou to everybody. Um, my, my priority is, is about safety, and um, I, I really have such a strong heritage here in Wellington. I've, I've grown up here, and I've, this, is, this is my home, and I've got a lot of history here. I've seen a lot of changes over the years, and I really want um, changes into the future um, to be positive and to have um, our community engaged with that change. I know that you, guys, you have all worked um, really hard on this plan, and um, it's been a slow process. Um, to create this this plan, um, yeah. So I think it's it's great that the community and uh, the council are able to work together on this uh, to make Wellington a, a better place. Uh, we know that there are issues. There's always going to be issues and problems, um, but it's important that we're able to work on those to resolve them. Um, working together, but it's it's worth it's worth putting in that effort to resolve those problems uh, for the future. Um, I'd like to talk about the cycleways. Personally, I don't use a bike. Um, I'm a bit nervous um, to try that, unfortunately, um, in terms of safety. We know that there are a lot of cars out there, a lot of heavy traffic um, uh, out there on the, on the road there. Uh, it's, 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 um, certain streets have a really high um, uh, traffic and um, going through Bowen Street, for example, um, there's, a, there's a lot of um, car parks there and, and it's, it's a lot of a bit of an issue there in terms of um, people trying to get into the car park buildings. And I just think about how many car parks there are. I have no idea um, in terms of, of numbers. But when I think about wanting to improve the roadway and doing an upgrade specifically of, of Bowen Street, um, I think it really needs to be widened um, because you've got those turns there um that are really narrow um and when you go up the hill there um it's 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 um 
it, it, it is, it's really narrow and it's, it's a bit of an issue in my view in terms of safety. There's really um, not enough, well, we know this, everyone knows there's not enough car parks, um, but how can we um, make sure that the bike lane is actually used um, and we don't want people being put off in terms of safety? Um, there's really not enough space along those roads. I don't see how that can be can be resolved in terms of creating more space for people to feel safe. Um, in terms of people who are pedestrians who are wanting to walk, um, a lot of people want to go to the gardens. Um, those gardens are such an asset and they're so beautiful. But you know, how many car parks are there? Um, how are people getting there? It would be great to know how people are getting to places like this. Um, how many car parks are there? How many people are, are use it, who, who go there are, are walking? How many people are cycling? Um, I think specifically in summertime, um, those gardens there are, are very popular and there's a lot of people there using those gardens. It can be really busy. Um, the car park will be full and there's more people coming. And I just, yeah, what's I don't know how we can resolve that. That's a bit of an issue. Um, it's such a popular place and I want, would love it to be available for, for more people, whether, yeah, whether they, there are other ways of people getting there. Um, and, you know, some people are thinking about how they are going to be getting around late at night. Um, night travel is, is another issue in terms of safety. Um, uh, are there cameras enough, enough cameras going to be set up uh, for security? Um, that's, that's a question for me um, in terms of night safety and people getting around the city at night. No, no, that's, they're, they're, they're communicating. There's a, the street, sorry, the interpreter's not from Wellington. The street starting with T, 10, yeah, or Tenakore. Tenakore, thank you. Tenakore Street. Sorry, the interpreter's not familiar with these streets. Apologise. I know that this street is, there's a lot of trees there. Um, and when you go around um, to Bowen Street, um, there's all those those beautiful trees there. Um, and it's, it's I just, just worry, my concern would be in the future um, if, how safe those trees are. Um, my concern is for trees dropping limbs um, and damaging uh, property and potentially hurting cyclists. Um, I'm just not sure if that's something you've taken into account, the age of those trees and whether they've had a safety audit. Um, I don't know if that's a, a separate contract in terms of who looks after the trees. I'm not sure, but that might be something that would be, be worth um, following up on. Do you know who's what if that's a separate contract or yeah, it would be worth finding out anyway. And if someone were to do a get an arborist or someone into just to do an audit of the safety of those trees. Um, obviously we don't want to chop down all the trees, um, but safety is important. Um, yeah, again, I, I always come back to safety in terms of, of traffic. Um, and things like cycleways are a bit concerning for me. On that, that same street, it's really popular in terms of um, shopping. There's a lot of people go there for shopping and that's, that's great. I think it's a lovely street. Um, but we've got those, um, those islands where, where you can, um, you can, you can um, the, the way that they've, they've got the history, those historical um, islands there are really lovely. I love seeing people there. It's a beautiful old street and I think that's a lovely way of maintaining history and the heritage of an area. I love watching people look at those. And I myself, I often go back and have another look. And I always learn something new as well. So I, I think that's something really important that we're able to retain. Um, our history and our stories, our narrative is, is really important. And I know it's really popular because I always see people looking at those. Um, it would be great to see that extended around Wellington City if we could have something similar in other streets. Um, that would just be amazing. I think that's something really beautiful that we could, really sim simple but really beautiful that we could, we could spread out around the city 
ensuring that our heritage is something that people have access to. So yeah, I don't know if that's a possibility, but I know it's really popular in that particular street. It would be great to see that extended. Uh, I'm thinking about uh, residents. Um, uh, it's, it was always an issue with people owning cars in these busy, narrow streets. Some people owning more than one car. And I do, you know, it's difficult. It's a really difficult issue um, in terms of limited car parking space. Um, it would be really good to know um, some numbers, get some statistics for these really busy, highly populated areas. It would be great to have some statistics. Um, I know the ideal is to get cars off the road and have more people um, riding bikes. Um, but yes, electric cars are expensive and, and I don't really know what the solution for that. It's a really difficult one in terms of um, achieving that goal. And often with people with families, um, you know, they're trying to drive their children around the city and they, they need their car. Um, so it's a really difficult one. I don't know the solution to that, sorry. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's, car parking is always a negative that people bring up, but I think we've got to think positive. We want to make change. Um, safety is, is paramount and we want to make things look nice at the same time and we've got budgets to balance and these processes to go through and people to consult with and um, council has a really big responsibility in terms of solving all of these issues and balancing all of this. I know you've got your long-term plan to work with and your short-term plan to work with um, so you've got a, a really big job on your hands but I um, I really appreciate that you do take the time to work with the community and to listen to those of us who are wanting to speak up and have our say. So I want to encourage you in your work. Thank you for, for the mahi that you're doing. I appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, kia ora. Thank you so much for coming in. Um, can I just ask you, Tanya, you're um, with Aotearoa Accessible Tourism. Um, did you just have any specific recommendations about accommodating disabled people who are coming to the gardens and how we can make, um, we make sure that we ensure their needs are met? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, I recall it would have been a few years ago um, talking about the needs of disabled people and accessibility. And I recall a, a conversation. Um, we were, I was asked to go in and check the footpaths. And so I did that. And, you know, there are some areas that are really flat. And um, then you've got all these uphill, downhill areas that are quite a challenge. And um, I can remember trying to navigate the stairs and just... Um, thinking to myself, how how accessible is this? And really, it, it, my 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 conclusion was that it's not terribly accessible. Um, I brought my granddaughter um, to head to the playground, and um, you know, we we're playing playing in the park and, and around the trees, and you know, navigating our way around the park. And you know, when I saw these really difficult places to access, these stairs and things, I just thought, oh goodness. Um, it is a, a massive issue. Um, it's, it's impossible. How do you solve that? How do you make this, this area completely accessible? Okay. Um, you know, some, there's, there's some places where perhaps could be improved. There's some places that I just feel like it's impossible, especially some of those steep hills. Thank you for that. And Deputy Mayor Free has a quick question. There's been quite a lot of talk about families and their needs. And I'm wondering if uh, what Tanya would think about a solution where we actually have some car parks near the botanical gardens actually dedicated for people that come in groups, family groups, with either older members or children. Yes, yeah, that that would be great. That's that's great that you're taking that sort of thing into consideration. I think that would that would work really well. You can have disabled car parks and you know people, um, senior citizen car parks and and family car parks. You know that would you would only need a, you know a, a few, but yeah, if you could have something available, that would be a really good call. 
Thank yeah, you. I do. I think that would be lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Tanya, again, for coming in and to your interpreter. Um, that was really helpful. You're welcome. Right, councillors, um, that concludes uh, public participation. Um, so now we're going to move on to the petition. Um, now, have we got Carl Frost? Carl, Morena, thank you very much Morena. for sitting through the public participation. Um, a warm welcome to you, and I hope we will meet the much. community needs today. <laughs> Well, and in fact, as I read through the uh, agenda this morning, I see your officers' uh, recommendations have in fact taken on board what the petition was about. Uh, so indeed they have, I see it's noted now that uh, the works to put in a petition crossing are scheduled. Uh, so that's wonderful to see. Uh, and so yeah, we uh, from the Residents Association are, are really pleased to see that. I did in fact prepare some slides as part of my presentation, but um, so I don't know if you still wish to see them to give you an overview, but in fact, um, in essence, um, as I say, the officers, officers' recommendations have uh, made the point uh, some, well, not so much moot, but have uh, indeed taken it on board. Oh, no, well, feel free to show your slides, just for those of us who are not okay. so familiar with the area, that would be great. <laughs> okay, I will do. Uh, so, sorry, uh, uh, from Hedy, uh, can I actually share my slides directly to you? Or I believe I sent them through to uh, Hedy Muller. Uh, so I think she will show the slides. Yes. Um, so the first one, uh, just a quick overview Hang of the Strathmore we'll Park. Just make area. sure that we've just got that up on screen. Just okay. Um, Carl, are you able to share the presentation? Uh, okay, uh, just one moment. Oh, uh, let's see. I'm afraid it's saying I'm not allowed to. <laughs> we'll, we'll find a solution. We'll put this on pause, don't worry, we won't eat up your time with us. It's fine. Uh, excellent. Thank you. Uh, shall I proceed then? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> cool. Thanks. Uh, so, just a quick overview of the area. Um, so, Strathmore Park, of course, we're bordered by the Broadway to the north major arterial route shown along the top of the page, uh, serving the eastern side of the peninsula. Uh, and in particular, our two key feed routes into that um, an organ road in the middle adjacent to the golf course and Strathmore Ave further to the right. So we have a current, currently we have a couple of pedestrian crossings within Strathmore Park. Um, one at the shops, uh, it's circled in green and the other one along Strathmore Ave further down adjacent to Kahurangi School. Um, but the area in particular that we're focused on here is the area highlighted in red adjacent to Scots College. Um, and just I've noted there further down, there's a small pedestrian zigzag that comes down the hill from Rokawa Street that we previously asked for a pedestrian crossing adjacent to because that's used by a lot of younger folk and families who come down the zigzag and cross to the play area, but they currently have um, no safe road crossing there. Um, but as noted, that was uh, too close to the base of the hill to uh, be a safe location. So instead we looked at um, something adjacent to Scots College. Um, and uh, if we could go to the next slide, please. Uh, so broad uh, entry into Monorgan Road from the Broadway for those of you who know the area. So we, um, this is a busy intersection, especially at the peak times. We do have a lot of people 
coming up and down the Broadway, either uh, people going to, uh, on to Kilburnie, such as college students going to Rongatai, uh, St Pat's and the like. Uh, also people coming back up the Broadway uh, to come to Kaurangi School. And we know already that this is a, a dangerous location um, for pedestrians, especially we get a lot of people coming out of the Monorgan Road there, going for the left turn. They tend to look right and not really check to see if pedestrians are coming. There's a little bit of screening there created by that uh, concrete curb. Um, but unfortunately, we know that as a while we would love a crossing in this vicinity at this stage, that's uh, not likely to happen um, just due to the complexities of this location. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, and so now we're closer to Scots College. Uh, we've got the entrance, the vehicle entrance uh, driveway into Scots College just there on the left. And this is getting close to the, uh, so this would be, I suppose, one end of the area that we could have a pedestrian crossing. Uh, Scots College, uh, when I've contacted the principal, Graham Yule, um, they support the idea of a crossing being here in general, um, but note that um, the location of the crossing is itself is something that would need to be uh, carefully reviewed um, in accordance with the traffic we have, in particular coming into this vehicle entrance. The, some of the Scots College buses do actually come in here as well, though uh, due to recent changes, most of their buses now stop down on the Broadway and the students walk up um, an organ road from there. Uh, next slide, please. And from the further up on Organ Road looking back down. Uh, so this is the, the key area um, that we're interested in. We have Rokawa Street there on your left coming down. We can see the bus just parked here on the left that in fact will go um, up or down Rokawa Street. Buses don't actually generally travel down on Organ Road from here. Um, the bus route in fact uh, goes via Rokawa Street on the left. Um, but we who do have so the people coming down Rokawa Street um, as you can see it's 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 a relatively narrow street it is complicated as well uh, by the, the trees um, no doubt about the fact they create visibility issues uh, so the combination of peak traffic especially at the key uh, drop off and pick up times uh, the, the narrow street the uh, trees obscuring things we feel just makes it an extremely um, difficult and dangerous area to cross um, and so that's why we requested that a pedestrian crossing be put in this area. And as I say, we're very thankful that uh, the officers um, have recommended and recommendations have taken that on board. Uh, so final slide, thanks. Um, and these were the key issues as discussed. Um, and I think I can say down the bottom there, we get a nice big tick because uh, <laughs> hopefully, uh, yeah, th there's no issues with taking this on board um, based on the officer's uh, recommendations. So thank you very much. Thank you very much um, for all your work there. Um, Councillor O'Neill has a question. Kia ora, Carl. Great to see this petition finally make its way to committee. Um, in the report, officers have said that it is planned works, but um, sits a little bit low on the priority list. Can you just talk a little bit about the location of the proposed crossing and maybe if you've noticed any near misses or what feedback you've had. I'm really interested in from young people and students in the area, how they're finding using that space. Um, yes, that's a very good question. Um, unfortunately, we haven't been able to get specific feedback from uh, young people. Um, so it's only an anecdotal from uh, parents and that, but certainly um, it's it's been noted that uh, there's a lot of concern about crossing there and while it's also um, a major entrance for or well, the main entrance for Scots College uh, we do know that we have a lot of the students going on to Kahurangi um, will be crossing in this vicinity as well um, and, and that in, in a way is, is perhaps a bit more of a concern it's a lot of younger students though we have to note that Scots College is in fact a, a full college and we you have um, sort of primary school right through so it's all age groups uh, so as I said, we don't have specific feedback there was actually a um the council traffic department created a kind of heat map um, a few years ago which i was trying to find as part of this presentation i think it was back in 2018 which highlighted 
the feedback that they'd gathered um, from the community in, in this intersection in particular, the Rolkawa Street um, and organ intersection was highlighted as, as a, an area of concern for a lot of people. Um, and that had, I believe, some statistics on uh, any near misses or incidents that had been recorded. As I say, unfortunately, I haven't been able to find that again. It's buried somewhere in my um, old archives. Um, but yeah, so I'm afraid I can't give you specific information, no. Uh, but certainly, um, I, I think one of the key things that I'll be interested in, certainly from the officer's point of view, is they look at the preliminary design is the recommended location of the crossing relative to Rokawa, um, depending on which way they go, you know, whether it should be above Rokawa or below Rokawa. I know there's, there's a lot of feedback for both sides. So I think, um, yeah, we'll have to see what they recommend from that. Thank you very much. Oh, we really appreciate it. And it's lovely to be able to respond to a community request. Great. Thank you. So thank you for your patience and persistence over the years. Really appreciate it. <laughs> thank you. Yes. Right. Um, Councillors, should we just take a quick morning tea and then we will hear from staff and uh, we'll get into debate. Thank you very much. So just back just before quarter to 11, uh, 10. Thank you. Quarter to 11. Sorry. Thank you.
and just take their seats again. Not sure where Councillor Day is. Okay, but now my Evandro Shera, Siobhan Proctor, um, Kito Hora Etio Korero. It is so nice to be agreeing to something from the community. So, is there anything you need to add to what's already in your comprehensive paper? Good morning. We have uh, started to work on the design uh, for the crossing. We already have a scheme design. Our intention is to, once we are happy with uh, the proposed, uh, our proposal, we would be starting a pre-engagement with uh, the school and uh, the petitioners. Uh, once they are happy with the outcome, we would proceed with the formal process of consultation. Excellent. Right, councillors, any questions? And I've just um, agreed to Councillor O'Neill's request just to put in a bit of detail in on the uh, around the process, but the officers have assured me they were going to do it anyway, so that's good to just be really clear. Councillor O'Neill, do you want to ask a question? Thank you. I just had one question. Often we say it's on the list of things to do. Um, I was just checking with you um, and where in the priority list uh, this project is. Um, hi, Councillor O'Neill. So, um, I'm not sure what number on the priority list it is, but it's got to the list so that we're actually, it's on the list for design this year and construction next year. So we have a process whereby we've got a long list of requests, obviously, um, and every year we go through a prioritisation process to um, just plan out what we're designing and constructing um, in any given year. Awesome, that is great news. Thank you. I, I actually just want to follow on with that. Um, very supportive of this project, but obviously lots of other communities would like this too. So is it possible to get some transparency around, is that on the website? Um, no, it's not. I think um, the list should be on the website, but we can definitely put the criteria in it just as with our strategic priorities, so we're happy to share that. Yeah, and yep. if, if people can just see where their particular project is, because then the councillors might want to have a say. <laughs> <laughs> without getting into operational detail. Well, no, 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 because, because this is what, no, there's a serious point behind this, is because sometimes we have communities coming in and then they get their thing happening, but there are lots of... So I, I would prefer if we just publish the list of the things we're doing and then the criteria as to how we then prioritise. Um, yeah. So can I suggest to whoever's around the table in the next trainium, though, that you actually do a bit of a briefing on that? Because I just think it would be good to understand oh, how some projects are getting through. Yep. Because not And, and then, uh, as I've said uh, prior, whether we need to increase the budget again just to, mm -hmm. to get more of these things through, because they are very popular with communities. Great. Any other questions? All right, Deputy Mayor Free. Thank you. Um, it really does give me a lot of pleasure to move this, and I would like to thank um, the Strathmore Park Residents Association who have um, picked up on this issue, which is an important issue for the community. Um, one thing that wasn't uh, made clear is how many children actually live in this community, because it's a highly, um, it's a big social housing area, and as we know, um, and with families, and as we know, they tend to be quite large families with a lot of children. So this is um, something that will really help kids get around their local community, as well as um, the fact that there's a lot of schools in the area as well. Um, there really isn't too much more to say, but um, a big yeah, big thank you to the staff for actually being um, picking this up, and I agree that there's a huge unmet need for more of this, and I think it comes into that category we discussed the other day of whether we need to increase um, the budget for minor works so that we can actually do more of these things which add to the safety of our uh, um, city, and uh, clearly what a lot of communities do want and are coming to us proactively to say that. So, happy to... Um, to move, and I would love it if Councillor O'Neill would um, second it. You wish to speak? Yes, please, just very briefly. Um, yeah, just to thank, it's not often that we get petitions coming to um, council and officers are responding like we can act on it within the space of a year, so that's really exciting. Um, Deputy Mayor Free, fellow ward colleague and uh, Strathmore Park resident, knocked it out of the park pretty well, but just to mention the Kahurangi School um, at Scots College um, and how, like, in proximity to the ward, if you don't live in the ward or you don't know it that well, um, it is tipped for a place of growth 
um, within our spatial plan. And it is also growing as we've all observed and rates of increases as well. So I'm, I'm pleased that their infrastructure is being prioritised. Excellent. Any other speakers? So to all the people who say that council doesn't listen, there you go, today we are very much so. Right, if you can vote, thank you. Chair Panett, I was just confirming that recommendation 14 is added, is, is brought up, sorry, because we haven't had the revised recommendation. Sorry, kind of um, it's on the screen, sorry, your, your particular bit is added in. It's not 14. On. So you're... Yes, yeah, there it yep. yep, sorry, that was paragraph 14 oh, added okay. and his yeah, recommendation. Yeah, number two, yep. Cool, thank you for that. Councillors? All right, have we got hand signals from the people online? Councillor Young, have you voted? It's unanimous. Thank you very much, councillors. Right, so um, now we go to now my Liam Hodgetts, Kete Hora Ite Koruro, for um, the main paper of today. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm going straight to uh, Claire Pascoe, I think. Um, <laughs> We've adopted the bike network, this is an Aotearoa route, and we're now talking about the design of the cycleway. So over to Claire for questions. Thanks. And Claire, obviously we've read the paper, so just anything else that's additional. Otherwise, we'll just go straight into yeah, questions. Yeah, go for it. Okay, right. Questions? Councillor Fitzsimons. Could you just summarise for us in broad terms the changes that have been made as a result of discussions with residents and businesses? Yeah, sure. Can you hear that? So most of the changes that we have made um, based on feedback from residents and businesses have been in that Tinakori Upper Bowen Street area. Um, so the most significant one was changing the downhill bike and bus lane from being a full-time bike and bus lane on Tinakori Road to, uh, to clearway hours from 7 till 9. So that allowed us to put 10... Um, short stay parks and two P10s back into the design. Uh, some of the other things that we've done is, uh, I guess the other significant one is the change in the parking zone. So this came from feedback that because St Mary's and Patanga Kreas are part of the um, Kelvin zone at the moment, which is a bit of an anomaly, um, they were see, seeing Kelvin commuters come and park in those side streets. So uh, we've part of the traffic resolution is to swap those two side streets to the Thorndon zone to make sure that that space is really available for the residents. Uh, we've also changed the configuration of some of the parking on the side streets. So we've added in more um, residents parking to Patanga Kres. So there were a small number of residents parks on Tinakori Road and those are moving to Patanga Kres. Um, and we had planned, we thought that it would be beneficial for the loading zone on St Mary's Kres to become a short stay P10 so that it could serve a uh, couple of functions but the feedback from the area was it was a preference to keep that as a loading zone. Um, the other change that we made is to keep the short stay parking at the top of Bowen Street so I think there's six parks between Tinakori Road and Sydney Street West um, that are P60 and those will be maintained with the design so they weren't initially in there. Yep. Thank you Mayor Foster. Thanks, Claire. Um, I asked you a number of questions on whatever date was we had the briefing, um, and just wondered if you had that data. So I was after the number of the number of cyclists using the routes up and down, and when. So if we got some sort of feel for the um, the uh, peakiness or non peakiness of the demand, um, the bus delay data um, again yeah. by time. Um, those are the first two areas of questions, so let's go, go there first. Okay, I'll, um, I'll do my best. I might have to take a few more questions while I find some of that and have it at my fingertips, but the main thing is that the 
the daily traffic. We, we put a camera um, for a week on the intersection of Bowen and the Terrace, um, and that is a, a really good way of getting numbers. So from that, we could see that on weekdays, we were having 665 cyclists ride through there, and on the weekends, we were having 500. Um, oh, sorry, every day across the seven days, we were having an average of 529. So you can see um, the weekdays had 190 people people a day on average still coming down there. Um, I'll, I do have that data by time of day um, there. I'll just ha see if I can dig it out. But it's definitely peaky on this route at the moment. Um, and that's, I guess, as expected because there is at the moment a clear way coming down Bowen. So the level of service for people on bikes is better in the peak hour. Um, it's more peaky than other routes around the city, like Newtown, for instance, that has uh, m more volumes throughout the day. But again, it's reflecting, I guess, the facilities at the moment. Uh, in terms of the bus delay, um, this is in this is all detailed in the bus priority action plan by time of day. Um, there are oh gosh, I have a very complicated graph in front of me, um, but I would suggest that the graphic in the bus priority action plan shows you really clearly where the delays are. So I'll dig that out, Mia, and I'll see if I can speak to it in a second. Oh, if, if you can maybe just um, email them both will be um, will be great. I know it might be difficult. Somebody else could email them to us. Um, that would be very, very helpful. Um, um, just hang on, Mia Foster, just Councillor Paul had yeah. a follow-up question. Could you just uh, ask that and then we'll go back to you? Yeah, yeah um, sure. Thanks, Claire. Just on that, um, counting the riders, um, ridership of that and the work that you did there, is that even a really like accurate way of measuring the demand, though? Because surely there's a whole bunch of people out there who won't even get on a bike in the first instance yep. who want to but are too scared to. Yeah, absolutely. So there is uh, the numbers that we're experiencing today are a reflection of the state of the network at the moment. So t the numbers are not at all really an indication of demand. To figure out demand, you have to look into things like surveys of when we ask people, you know, if the network felt safe, would you ride? Or when we used to ask a question in the resident survey, what is your current mode of transport? What is your preferred way to travel? Those sorts of questions start to get at how much demand demand there are. So I wouldn't use the count data from today as an indication of demand by any means. Thank you. Right, Mayor Foster, next question. Yeah, no, and I, I wasn't suggesting that stat, but it does give us a useful bit of a, 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 a starter anyway. Um, the other area, the second area of question um, is just you're thinking around Glenmore Street going um, uh, going further up, uh, where, you know, we had, we had a little bit of a conversation about that. I think it'd be useful to share uh, what your thinking is, uh, because clearly the bulk of those people will come from further up, come up from Karori or Northland, or uh, rather than actually just go to the gardens. Yeah, absolutely, and it, it's something that we've recognised in the report is that we had, uh, in terms of the rapid rollout, we really had to bite it off in section by section if we were going to speed up the pace we were delivering it. So, but we acknowledge that means that we can't kind of get the whole route planned and delivered at once. Um, the idea with stopping at the gardens is that at least it was a destination to get people to. Um, it wasn't just the middle of nowhere, um, and there are you know good advantages to being able to improve the access by more transport modes to the gardens. In terms of the next part of the route, that is um, a project that we've actually put into Waka Kotahi for the Streets for People funding process. Um, we should hear back next month about that, or actually later this month. The, the, while we haven't done any design work and optioneering on that project yet, you could expect a similar approach to design using the same principles from the bike network plan that was agreed back in March. So we'll be looking to create safe connected networks. Um, we'll be doing a parking management plan for that one as well that looks at the impacts and how best we can mitigate any um, parking removal that might be included in that one. Um, but yeah, we'll definitely in that uphill direction be trying to find a solution that creates a connected, safe um, facility for people in bikes. But there's not too much we can say with certainty because we haven't started that design work yet. Okay, you specifically noted the uphill direction. 
I guess what you've yes. noticed in these projects that we're bringing you to at the moment is the interim nature is, is meaning that we're looking for things that we can tolerate to still make a good step forwards in terms of safety and level of service. Um, and sometimes where we have to make compromises, we're erring towards protection on the uphill where that speed differential is much bigger. Yes, you know, I think I agree with you on that, that kind of thinking. Okay. Um, and then the other, well, that, that leads me to, um, at the moment, we've got a resolution, which is just simply an, um, the whole resolution put together. Uh, can we in any way um, divide that between the up and the downhill? I will answer that question. And how, what, what would that look like? I have advised Councillor Young that she can make some amendments, um, taking out the parts that she supports and if she wishes to. But the paper is, is written. I think the, I think the well, I know the paper is written. I'm looking for how you would amend it if you were going to go want to vote for part of it, but not the other part. Well, I've just told you, so you could talk to Councillor Young. Uh, Councillor Young's bit was only part of the um, length. Right. I've given her more further advice. Oh uh, well, I will talk to Councillor Young. Oh, thank thank you. you, Madam Chair. I think. Um, Chair, okay. I, I th J May just, I've just, just to oh, clarify, sorry. sorry, to the Madam Chair, I think. Um, uh, Councillor Young's question to me earlier, and I think what uh, Mayor Foster is saying is that um, when we come to resolve the traffic resolution, can we itemise each separate piece of it, uh, break it out? Because at the moment the TR is just lumped as a whole lot of dot points, and I think it might be easier for the decision making to have A, B, C, D. Um, I, I'd have to have a quick adjournment, have a chat to Claire and, and Letitia just to understand whether that's possible or not. Or legal, legal yeah, because it yeah. is it is a package. It's yeah, not. Or, or, it's or not. Legal. It's, so, yeah. um, so I think the advice to Councillor Young at the moment is to remove a, um, to, to, to move an amendment that is specific to her needs. Um, uh, Liam, generally, when we have traffic resolutions and there are significant changes to them, then you have to go back to the start with a new traffic resolution because we've consulted on this and it's entirely no need for an adjournment, councillors. <laughs> but if there is, um, you know, one aspect, Ma Madam you Chair, try Madam Chair. Can can I can I test that because um, usually you can't go beyond what is um, what is being notified, but you can go within it. Yeah. This so I would, I would I'd appreciate some advice on that. Okay. All right. We'll take an adjournment. But Mayor Foster, can I just say we have been working on this for months, and so it's a bit um, asking at the last minute. So, five uh, Madam minutes, Chair, please. that is that, Madam Chair.
Oak. Let's make a traffic resolution as a group of councillors on the spot. So I am going to going to continue. We're going to continue, and you you can work on this, Mayor Foster, because this is very last minute, and you can see why I'm a little bit grumpy. Councillor, okay. can I just point of order? I've raised these what, issues what, right. What's your what's your point of order? Well, I find that's a slightly offensive and be mis misrepresentation. I'm not. I'm not yeah. upholding it, yeah. Mayor Foster. Yeah, you look, I know time. you're not because you're, you're chairing. But but I've raised the same issues from the beginning. You can no right. So keep, keep moving, please. And, and sorry, through you, Madam Chair. No, it's important. I, I do make this. Just yes, that's right. So so all of the public submit. This is the opportunity to consult. We've consulted. We've got feedback. This is the opportunity to make amendments consistent with the feedback you receive from the public and the community. If you create something brand new then we're into some very awkward territory. Thank you. So my grouchiness is the lack of organisation, OK? And that is not a point of order. Right, OK. So, councillors, have you got any questions that you would like to ask while the Mayor works on his amendment? We could, what's that? Yeah, yeah. Mayor, uh, sorry, not Mayor Rush, not yet. Councillor Rush. I have got, got one day to get the papers organised, right. I suppose. Um, yeah, Claire, so you talked about um, the latent demand, and I have a number of times asked about a soccer count on Brooklyn Hill, which we've used as the innovative or transitional sort of you know, template. Um, the numbers on there actually show, show a decline since we've put the cycle lane in. So I'm just wondering where the assumption that uh, if you build it, they will come uh, is, is, you know, um, supported. Uh, so the the build it will come assumption is comes from a few places. I, obviously, I'd just say data from travel trips in the okay. last three years have been the weirdest they've been for a very long time, mostly because during lockdowns and COVID and working from home, people haven't been taking trips. So the um, patterns you see in cycle trip data are also seen in all modes. Um, so that, that's one thing to note for the last few years. The numbers I had for Brooklyn Hill, sorry, I hadn't anticipated the Brooklyn Hill data, um, do actually show an increase, but I will need to round back to you on that one. But in terms of things like the Hut Road, Shed Path, the Oriental Bay, where we are investing in good quality separated infrastructure, we are seeing an increase in numbers. Um, across the city, I've got this number on the tip of my tongue, um, we have been seeing 15% annual growth since, I think the year 2000, and we've been seeing 25% annual growth where dedicated bike paths are installed. We've seen a 41% growth since 2012. Um, so I think the, the growth statistics are pretty clear. It's also very well evidenced from cities all around the world that where they've started investing in high quality bike infrastructure, there's a strong correlation with an uptake um, from people. Thank you. Right, any other questions? Councillor Foon. Um, kia ora, Claire. And can you just outline how long offices have been um, over the transitional project and the, the TR project? How many um, meetings with community groups and how long you've actually been engaging with the community yeah. over this project for? So um, you'll remember in September last year that was the decision um, at this committee to proceed with the project. So from October we started working collaboratively with our key kind of design partners on the project. That was to start thinking really high level about what some of the options were. Since November or December, we've been having conversations with the local community. So November, that was focused in letting the businesses along Whitmore know. Um, and then December, we made contact with the um, Thorndon Residents Association. And, and as Richard pointed out at that point, they were really high level conversations. Um, we didn't have our designs landed. Um, and we know that conversations can be tricky if you sort of start to steer um, when you don't really have good clarity on where your designs are going. But in February, um, and remembering that we started this project off using the transitional um, process, um, but February was when we launched the designs on the website. That was a, a real focus for engagement with the community. So we had them promoted, um, advertised marketing material. Uh, we had hosted a webinar that I think we had around 100 people attend. That was when we sent newsletters out to, through our MailChimp. So we've got an e-newsletter that's got our kind of growing 
database of stakeholders that's been going out since December. Um, March, we met with the Thorndon residents and businesses on site in um, Tinakori. That was after the designs were released in February. Um, and that really kick-started a process of working particularly with that group. Um, they did an amazing job, I think, of digesting quite a lot of technical information and offered Vivian to come and join the team if she'd like to, because she's got across an amazing amount of knowledge. Um, and so we sat down with quite a long list of recommendations that they had and kind of worked through the ones that could be picked up, we thought, and the ones that just didn't really fit any more of the project's kind of outcomes or objectives. And so based on that, it was sort of a... a March, April, May, um, that obviously was the point that we transferred to a traffic resolution process which included a, a formal public consultation on the TR, so that was through July. But by the time we went to the traffic resolution process, we had had quite a lot of dialogue back and forwards with that group um, and we'd also been sending out those updates through the MailChimp um, the, to the kind of people that we'd been picking up and talking to along the way. Thank you. Any other questions? Right. Oh, Mayor Foster. Yeah, just the one other one that I was going to ask is just can you walk us through a little bit the um, <coughs> the other question that I asked you on whatever it was Tuesday, um, the, uh, the the benefits of bus lane uh, the bus bus stop um, arrangement. Oh, the platform. Because you've got the only times that you as a cyclist going through that and it's, uh, it's uphill the only times you're going to need to use that is when the bus is actually yeah. there yep. which of course is the time people are getting on and off the bus and you've got to stop as a as a as a cyclist you've got to stop and wait for them if you don't you obviously have a collision risk so just struggling a little bit with the benefit yeah. of that particular proposition Yep, sure, I can talk yep. to that. So yep. the bus stop platforms have been quite uh, of a lot of interest, not just on this project, but around the city and on Riddiford Street where we actually have one. Mm. And this design is comes from what you need to do when you create separated cycleways. So separation is obviously protecting people from the traffic. Um, and what normally happens at a bus stop is that people are kind of travelling along. Well, at the moment, people travel along just kind of on the outside of a parked car in between fast-moving traffic. And then when a, a bus pulls in front of them, they, if there's room, they can kind of go around, but they're merging back out with all that traffic. So we've put them in a protected bike lane on the curb side. So if we weren't to use these bus platforms, it would mean that cyclists would have to come out of that protection and merge into a live traffic lane and, and be, uh, I guess, at a conflict zone that is of more risk than managing that conflict with the lower speed users. So, um, and I can understand there are concerns around this in terms of the, that now we're talking about a conflict between um, pedestrians and people on bike, but in the overall kind of safe system, this is minimising the conflict by, by putting it with slower speed users in a less risky environment. So a person on a bike is and must give way to people coming on and off that bus. So there is an element of waiting while the bus is stopped there. But that is seen to be better and safer um, than it pulling into the curb and bikes having to go around it. And in, this, in the instance of Tinakori Road, often you, you'd be waiting behind the bus either way because um, it's such a narrow stretch. I, I guess that was my question is if you've got to wait, does it matter whether you're waiting? Yeah. Behind it's, the bus or behind the um, behind the platform. It's not so much yeah. about the waiting, the the disbenefit of having to wait. It's about the ability to keep them protected from um, those faster moving vehicles through that section of the bus stop. Okay, and the final question was just um, what advice do we have from the botanic gardens management? Um, so we relations we had. Uh, we have had conversations with them about um, the car parking removal. We, we talked early on about kind of options of through the Botanic Gardens. That's come up um, through this project, but it also came up when we were talking about Pāneke Pōneke, and there's a strong um, uh, kind of dislike to the idea of being able to ride through the Botanic Gardens, um, and so that, that kind of option of riding through was not... Um, seen as a good idea by the botanic garden manager and, and I guess more widely internally. Um, so yeah, that, that's the conversation we've had. We've also been trying to find out information obviously about that lady Norwood car park and how that works at, on site. But the impact of the parking removal on the visitation to the botanic gardens, that hasn't been part of the conversation? Um, I'm actually not too sure on that. I could check. Yeah. Thanks. 
Thank you. Right, that's all the questions. Oh, Councillor Rush. How many accidents involving cyclists have there been on this route in, the, say, the last five or ten years? It was answered. Around, well, at least the number of accidents. Thank you. Let me come back to you in a minute. Sorry, I don't have that yeah, sure. right on hand. If you've got the answer, Madam Chair, then I'm ha happy for you to answer it. I'll let the officer. <laughs> She's the expert. It's in the business case. I should have that open. I got the team in the background just helping with the questions. Any other in the meantime? No, I don't think there are. Okay. Might have to give me a few minutes for this. Got a nice 70s vibe. No, that's okay. Sorry, I should have had this one open. They're just all in various different places. I know where it is. Here we go. on the document. It's just opening. Okay. Okay. So, the police crash data from the last 10 years shows there's been seven serious, 20 minor and 46 non-injury crashes. Oh, this is along this route. Yep. Yeah, sure. So over the last 10 years, this is police records, so it's stuff that's reported, Yeah. which is, yeah, um, seven serious, 20 minor, and 46 non-injury crashes. Do you know if, um, if they were at intersections or elsewhere? You're going to have to give me more time for that. <laughs> I, I'd have to get into CAS and pull that up, I'm yeah. afraid. You can do that in your own time once we've got the debate finished. I don't think it's going to make a fundamental difference. Yeah. I would say that when we assess these, we use a thing called a safe system assessment. Um, so the score for the current setup of the road, not that this will mean much to you, is 48 out of 64. But basically every single option we looked at was a, an improvement on that. Thank you. Right, so look, um, Claire, just given that you actually can't provide that information without doing some more work, could you do that? Could you undertake to do that for Yeah, we can Rush? get a visual from CAS and yep, send that yep, picture. Yep. It's probably okay. better in a picture. Okay, that's lovely. Thank you very much for that. Right, any more questions, councillors? Right, well, um, what we're going to do now is that I'm going to briefly introduce the report. Councillor Paul can exercise her... Uh, right to speak if she so wishes, then uh, Councillor Young's amendment, then Councillor Condy's, and then whatever, just give the, the Mayor a bit more time to do what he needs to do. So no, just... Found a bit now, so. Oh, okay, all right. So if you just, um, yeah. just while we're doing this, you can send that through, that would be awesome. No, okay, yep, yep, no, that's always helpful. Thank you. Right, well... Colleagues, it gives me great pleasure to introduce this paper today. I appreciate it's contentious and there are some of my constituents uh, who don't welcome it, but I think there are many positives here and um, it is a temporary one and any issues that might arise through this um, change uh, can be ironed out. So I would like, first of all, to give a big thanks to the Thorndon community. They have engaged in a very constructive way, in a very thorough and rigorous way, as you would expect from uh, uh, this community. They have been always engaged in uh, council matters over uh, many years. So I'm very grateful for that, and the proposal is better because of it. Um, we also have a large number of submitters on this proposal, thank you for your work as well. And of course the team, 
Claire, Vida, Renee, Liam and others, you've done an amazing job. So thank you so much. Um, we gave you direction and you have done that. Um, so, like I say, it is a temporary one. Um, the permanent work's coming in 2024, uh, so there is more time to have the kind of dialogue that some in the community want. Um, I'm a great fan of trialling things. We will get a lot of um, valuable input. And saying that, there is strong public support for this proposal. 75% is um, very high. And... Um, Really, we have seen some major compromises made, so that is good. Um, and we will be responsive to some of the issues that have been raised. Uh, speed limits are coming back onto the agenda. I'm, I'm very committed to getting the speeds down. Um, that's probably the most effective thing we can do to keep cyclists and pedestrians safe. Um, the issues raised around walkability, um, definitely they are on the agenda as well. Partly the speed limits, as I said, will help with that. But let's get Wellington moving. Um, we'll look at those as well. Um, interesting to note the feedback from disabled submitters um, that there wasn't, yeah, there was a bit of a range, um, but there wasn't opposition, so um, I took great uh, comfort in that. Um, the compromises of uh, reducing the downhill from a 24-7 uh, busway to having clearway times is a big compromise on the the part of the cycling community. Um, so I hope that the community who have concerns about this proposal uh, will take that on board. And um, and we have done some, of course, some work around um, the zones. Uh, Councillor Young raised, rightly raised this, this, the four parking zones in Thorn. Yeah, nine years ago. Okay, it's been a bit slow. Um, but we are listening and obviously we're trying to make some more parking available in the side streets. Um, Mr Murcott and I have had a large number of conversations around process, um, I don't think I need to tell you that I do believe in um, participatory democracy. And so, look, we, we've still just got to uh, mature our processes there. But we did have a working group with the Thorndon community, and I, um, as I said, found it um, very helpful. Just the last point that I would like to make is that um, I've said publicly that I don't want to have an argument about safety on our roads. People have a right to be safe, and this plan is going to help with that. Um, and as we see all the slips around the city, there is cognitive dissonance going on collectively as a community. Those slips are caused by us. We have caused them because we have, um, I appreciate there's other factors, but climate change, climate change is now a fact of life. And uh, we need, we cannot just adapt. That would be a disaster. We need to mitigate. And this is um, one of the key ways that the city has decided to do this. Um, we have been arguing about this for decades. It's not uh, a sudden move. Um, and it's certainly not about saying that people will never be able to drive a car. They will still be parking, and people who really need it, um, they will still be able to do that. So that's enough from me. Councillor Paul, do you wish to speak now, or do you wish to speak later? Thank you, um, Chair, for letting me second this paper. Um, I just wanted to speak briefly to really back the work of the officers. Um, we've had, the, there has been a, a public meeting and, and many meetings one-on-one -on -one with members of the community. Uh, and it's been really inspiring to see your collaborative approach and your willingness to, to make it work. And it's definitely made me a real fan of the tactical urbanism approach which allows us to make the changes now and work with communities to tweak it to make it work because um, I think it's a really humble approach that acknowledges that we don't know all the information and that communities have experience and expertise that we can learn from that makes, um, that will make changes that improve people's ability to move around and then when we're ready to you know, bring in the gold-plated version of the cycleway, the permanent version, it will be one that we know works. So really wanted to back the work um, of our officers and particularly Claire, Vida and Renee and just the really humble approach that you've taken and, and your willingness to listen and to tweak and make tweaks where necessary. At one of the public meetings with Thorndon businesses, there was one mm -hmm. business who said... Um, and this person had a young family who cycled with their um, young children and, and their partner did as well. And they said, 
you know, you either do the whole network or don't even bother doing anything at all. And I think that's kind of the point of this approach is that we're trying to get an entire network up and going, uh, yeah, up and going and, and in place. And so we're trying to work with speed because we're trying to get that whole network so that we can get the benefits of an entire network, which includes the safety, the mode shift, um, and the ability for kids to be able to ride on this network as well without being scared of being hit by a car. So again, just want to bring it back to the fact that although we're doing this piece by piece, it's about the entire network and it's about the greater benefits and goods for the city and for um, the country and in fact the world because this is climate action. Um, I just wanted to quickly thank uh, Minister Michael Wood for the changes that he's announced this week which makes projects like this even easier and means that we can do this work across the city and all over the country to make active transport modes um, better, more accessible and safer. Um, he's provided really good direction as the Minister for Transport, so um, yeah, really happy for, for that leadership from central government. And finally, I just want to reaffirm my commitment to delivering the entire transitional network. I think Paneke Pornike is one of the best projects that, have, that has come out of this term. It's aspirational. We've, we've sent a clear signal to the community that we will deliver it in three years. And, um, you know, as long as I'm around the table, I'll continue to advocate for uh, that and that we get it all up and running and um, that this work isn't in vain. So thanks, officers, and thanks, everyone. Thank you. Right, Councillor Young. Um, thank you. So could I have my amendment up on the yes. screen, please? So, um, um, I'm just, oh gosh, it's all one sentence. Goodness, that's one hell of a sentence. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, it's kind of done on the fly, you know. Um, um, you know, because I love punctuation. Um, so, so I would just say, first of all. Um, you know, my concern is, is this about cycling or is it about climate change? Because it should be about ensuring livability in Wellington, you know, for the local residents, the local businesses, and actually, just as importantly, the people who live further away and can't get easily to the Botanic Gardens, which of course is very easy if you live in Thorndon. And um, I totally, you know, I know the Thorndon Residents Association have worked really hard with the officers. I think it's been very frustrating for them. Um, partly because there's no master plan about how they're going to get up the rest of Glenmore Street. And I don't know how familiar you are, but there's one hell of a hairpin bend. And I don't, even going around in a car is kind of a little bit breathtaking. I don't know how they're going to do it with the cycleway. And, and I'm concerned about the parking. For those of you who go to the, um, is it called Garden Magic, you know, in the summer when, we, when the sun shines and it's warm? Uh, you know, a lot of people need to go by car because it's in the evening and they're taking young children and they're taking picnics, that kind of thing. So, you know, it's, I mean, the Thorn and then they're concerned about what happens to the Thorndon Village because um, there are a lot of destination shops and restaurants there. So just for those of you who aren't as boringly obsessed with Wellington's history as me, as it is the oldest suburb in Wellington, and it really has borne the brunt of the city's growth. I can dimly remember Thorndon before the motorway went through. You know, it absolutely carved through that suburb. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it was it was completely brutalised, as was the Bolton Street Cemetery and probably Tamitha's ancestors and mine. Um, so the Botanic Gardens is a major le leisure destination, and it's a lot of it are young families uh, and older people, many of whom have um, ability issues. Uh, and you know, luckily, everyone around this table, even including me, can you know struggle up hills to get to things. But even when you're a bit older, it's harder. And it's just not, you know, if, if you go, if you take the cable car to get to the Botanic Gardens, if you want to get down to the area around the Selsh, Sound Shell or the Duck Pond, according to the council signage, it's a 21 minute walk. So you've got to get to the top of the cable car, then a 21 minute walk before you get to your destination. And I think it's unreasonable to expect older people to walk up from the railway station or walk down from the cable car. There is a good bus service if you live on that bus service. Number two, I happen to live on that bus service. It's great when it works. Um, but of course the other issue is that there are, it, it's, a, it's a residential area and it's a shopping area and people have tradies who come, they have you know, a lot of old houses which need renovation uh, and things like that and it's going to be very hard for them. If it's about emissions, uh, it's just an interesting statistic, um, 
uh, even if cycleways increase cycling commuting by 60%, it would only re reduce our road transport emissions by 0.4% between 2022 and 2050. And it would be better to plant more trees in the botanic gardens. So that would be a solution to that. Um, but this is about serving everybody in Wellington. It's not just about the privileged few who are cyclists, just using Patrick Morgan's own words. Um, we need to look after the older citizens, we need to look after our disabled citizens um, who don't have the option of cycling. But there's one thing in here which I'm really pleased about, buried in this traffic resolution, I'll come to that in a moment, and that is, ever since I've been on council, I've been trying to get Thorndon's parking, four parking zones sorted out. I live on Mount Victoria, it has one parking zone. Thorndon has four, and part of it includes people in Colburn who, as we know, have we heard, park in Thorndon as commuters, so it's good that's been sorted out. Um, I do think that having all these things in one traffic resolution is very messy, like an omnibus traffic resolution. You know, I mean, I walked out of law school, so I don't know about the legal side, thank God. Um, but, you know, it should be so we can go point by point, and I can say, yes, I really like the idea of the um, change in the parking in Colburn, because that's actually not part of the package, that should have been done nine years ago. Um, and, and then even from the frustration of, you know, I do it on my iPad, so I'm looking at the recommendations, and then I've got to try and flick through all the pages to try and find what the actual traffic resolution is. So, you know, if you have to do it this way for legal reasons, that's sad, but it's also very difficult to read from a, a point of view of trying to understand your paper. So anyway, I have great pleasure in moving this amendment. I hope you understand that it's it's about, um, uh, this, you know, cycleway is a way of making... Um, keeping the locals happy and not having it as intrusive as it, um, so that you know, having it, sorry, replacing the cycleway with the clearway is less intrusive for the locals and it makes it easier for people to visit. And I think basically we're looking after the interests of the many Wellingtonians who love going to the Botanic Gardens and Simon Wolf will be seconding this. Thanks. Now look, can I just ask a question? Are you basically saying that you want all the, under what we'd like to do on page 87 of our papers, diligent, you want that all as a separate list and then we'll vote on them? Because we'd need to be really clear about what you mean by separate. And I guess, so, so we just need confirmation of that. It needs to be really clear. And then I need to ask the question of officers about whether then if we start picking at the different aspects, then does it actually, and legally, legally can we do that? So just, just I just want to get the process really clear, okay. Um, so we would need to send these plans back to road safety audits um, for that particular one in terms of getting rid of the separation. It would need to go back through a road safety audit process um, and get into... Sorry, separating out the things or... Oh, sorry. Or, or the, um, um, the, the clear way? Separating out the things, depending what the thing is, is likely to trigger sending it back into road safety auditing processes. Some things won't um, have that impact, but some will, like that one. Is there something that you, are there some other things that you can just pick out rather than the whole lot? That I would like is one, putting in the clear way rather than the... Yeah, um, yep, that's fine. Yep, and the yep. second one is the parking zones, stopping Kelvin from parking in Thorndon. Well, if we could do it like that, would that, because I think then... Yeah, the parking zone one, definitely. That's the, the that's not a that problem. separated cycleway one going to a clearway would ne will trigger us needing to go back into road safety auditing processes, um, but this might also be I'm assuming yeah. But <coughs> assuming it goes through, <laughs> Mayor Foster, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it is a big well, assumption. Well, I, I, su I suspect none of these will, so that's um, that's uh, kind of makes a moot point. But we still got to say what we think. Um, how does it need to go through a traffic resolution, a uh, traffic um, safety process, when effectively what Councillor Young is suggesting in that area is to keep it as is for most of the day except for that peak time? So it's got to be an improvement in what's there from a safety perspective. So I, I, I'm baffled, because otherwise you'd have to put the, the existing environment through a, a traffic safety process. But, so just to clarify in the Mayor's question, if it's, current, if it's going back to its yeah. uh, current state, why would it need an audit? Yeah. Uh, well, oh, my understanding of the road safety auditing is that they are assessing the risk of the proposal, not against current state, but against the inherent risk. So if they were to do a road safety audit of the current state, it wouldn't come up very high. But we would be still implementing a change that we would need to feel comfortable that we are happy with the risk that's been identified through a road safety audit. 
Okay. We need to double check if we have to, but I think yeah. that's what we would probably prefer to do to feel comfortable could, we weren't adding. So, so we'll probably we'll probably do an adjournment. Councillor yeah. Young. Uh, sorry, can um, I just, can I just, just check that? Because because what what Councillor Young is suggesting here is to put the facility in for 22 hours a day, but not for the other two. It would seem baffling to for that to be a road safety concern against the existing, where you've got it for no hours of the day. So that would be utterly illogical. Just to clarify, road safety audits don't compare what you're proposing to the current. They just assess what the, is in front of them for the project. So that'll change what's been in front of them to assess the risk of. They don't do any comparison to current state. So just I'd as well understood we don't that we the current environment. <laughs> um, Siobhan, I'd understood that we could um, put up an amendment basically restricting something that's already been suggested. Is that still the advice, just after what Claire said? So as long as the restriction is less restrictive than what's been suggested, that's fine. Okay, that's fine. So, Councillor Young, just to, for ease, is it, we've taken a German, but just basically to say that you want to take those two things out rather than separating everything out. If you do want to separate everything... You can live with it. Okay, so we're just going to take five-minute adjournment just to tidy up the wording. Yep. My
so I just can't see you at the moment. Claire's got some important advice, please. Um, we've just been trying to find out from Waka Kotahi whether a part-time cycle lane is legally possible. And it seems like at the moment, the traffic control device rule doesn't allow for it. It allows for a clear way for vehicles and for a bus lane, but we don't think we've got the ability to make a part-time cycle lane. That's just at the moment advice. So, so does... It relates to the First Amendment. So your... So this just relates to that amendment. Okay, so you're saying, Claire, just for absolute clarity, that we can't go ahead with it? That's the advice at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, if it's just a clear way, that's fine, but vehicles can also travel in it. Okay. So, does Councillor Young, do you need to change that then? Sorry, sorry, we've just all just got to get through this. Are you happy then with a clear way? No parking. Yeah, yep, yeah, that's fine. So, well, sorry, um, councillors online, we're just, just getting a bit more advice. I was uh, just responding to what the Tinakori residents have been asking for, which is a part-time bike lane. Um, that's the thing we don't think is possible. But the way this amendment is written is for a part-time clear way, which is uh, possible. It just means that we can't restrict its use just to people in bikes. possible to include it. It's not a direct negative of the um, the proposal. Well, it sort of is. We haven't got any from, from democracy services. So um, I'm going to ask Councillor Wolf to speak, if he wishes, and then uh, we hopefully will vote quickly on this set of amendments. Councillor Wolf. Um, I was going to reserve my right, but I actually will speak. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm supporting Councillor Young's amendment um, on the basis of, of um, a little bit more of a compromise in relation to the community. Um, I remember um, with the hearings, hearing Maz Scannell talk as well in relation to the Botanic Gardens, she was um, speaking on behalf of the Friends 
um, we've heard Richard Murcock speak today, and um, we've also heard um, people from our um, disability um, sector um, speak as well. And 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 I, I believe that, that this would be a fair and reasonable way of um, moving forward and um, trying to um, uh, gain a resolution that that is is fair. So. Um, Thank you to Councillor Young, and um, I hope that you'll all support this amendment. Um, just one other little thing, sorry. I just have to, um, because um, um, Tam brought up the, um, the consultation that's going through um, with Michael Wood, and I think it is a good one. It's not to say that, um, that, that, that it's a done deal. Um, it, it isn't, and people will be feeding into that consultation as well. So I think that that that's worth worth noting. Um, so please please um, do help um, and support this this um, amendment. Thank you. Thank you. Any speakers? Or should we just go straight to the vote? Can we take four D separately, please? Oh, we'll do them all separately. Yeah, okay, I think that's just. And there will all be a division on all of them. Right, okay, so um, councillors online, and I'm not sure if Liz Kelly's available, we're just going to take these three separately. Have you got them in front of you? Yep, okay, you're all clear what we're doing? <laughs> Sorry. Can okay. you share them? We don't. No, I don't. Oh, can we... Uh, it'd be good to have them on screen. On screen, yeah, yeah, that's a good Brilliant. idea. Hopefully we'll get that all on one page so that you can easily see it. Is that good? You can see it? Sweet. Okay, so we're going to vote on 4C first, please. If you can all vote. So that fails with one, two, three, four, six people uh, in support. Thank you. 4D. Oh, what's yes. Yes, sorry. Yes, yes, sorry. Yes, yes. Yes, I am. <laughs> yeah. That's unanimous, um, and 4E now. <laughs> I thought that was you, Nicola. An orienteering guy, probably. Right, um, and that fails also. Uh, six in favour, uh, nine opposed. Uh, thank you, councillors. Right, we're going back to the substantive with 4D included. Um, any speakers? Oh, of course. Sorry, Councillor Day. And I have <coughs> oh, sorry, sorry, actually, Councillor Day, would you mind if we do Councillor Condi's <laughs> amendment? Sorry. Excellent. I'm sure it's not 4C anymore. It's probably 4E or something. Um, uh, Councillors, this is just an amendment to extend the hours for the downhill shared bus and bike lane on Tunikori Road. Um, at the moment in the paper it's proposed to go from 7am till 9am. This amendment would change it so it, the hours would go from 7am to 10am Monday to Friday. Um, one of the things I know is, is bus congestion is still an issue after 9am, between 9am and 10am. Um, buses are still taking longer than the average travel time to make this journey, so there will still be uh, benefits for the buses to have this dedicated lane at this time of the day. And I'll also note that our uh, good friends at, at 
uh, Greater Wellington and Metlink are trying to encourage people to travel sort of outside the peak of peak time um, to make their network capacity go further. And so by doing this and having the clear way from 9am to 10am, we're supporting their efforts in that because people will be confident if they go outside of that peak of peak that they will still get a, a good service and a good quick journey. Um, I think it's also really interesting and supportive for cyclists. You know, a lot of cyclists, a lot of um, parents will do the school drop-off, for example, before they come into the city or come into work. Um, and they should be entitled to as much safety and protection as somebody who's able to commute at normal hours. Um, you know, Mayor Foster, you asked about the kind of peakiness of the demand and, and use along the cycleway at the moment. And really, we don't know whether it's whether how much the demand is is driven by clearway hours. So by tr by trialling the 7 a.m. to 10 a.m., I think we'll get a good a better indication about some of those um, demand issues as well. Um, I would also just note that one of the reasons I also chose 10 a.m. is because we know across the city that the demand for short stay parking, so P10, P20, P120 parking, um, peaks between 10 a.m. and 2 o'clock in the afternoon. That's when we have, um, you know, the greatest demand in the city for sh that type of short stay parking. And so we know that actually in that 9 a.m. to 10 a.m., um, time, the demand for short stay parking is lower. It's one of the lower times of day. So that's a time of day when the parking that's av available, for example, at the Rose Garden where there's, I think, 44 parking spaces there, should be enough to meet the demands in this area. Um, and so the idea of, of extending that for an extra hour should have minimal impact on the, on the needs of parking because of the demand at that time of day. Um, it's unusual hours for a clear way to go till 10 a.m., but I do think that this project is supposed to be kind of a trial and, and let us try new things and see how they go. So I do think that this is um, worth us um, trialling. Um, and I just wanted to note a little bit about enforcement, which has been an issue in Newtown. Um, the reason that we've chosen 7 a.m. is so that we will have parking officers um, do start work from 7 a.m. So from 7 a.m. we will have parking wardens available and vehicles could be towed if they were parked in that area. We're also looking at installing a static camera on this route, which would be able to um, take photographs and issue tickets even without a parking warden attending the scene. And I think that particularly once that static camera has been installed, which won't be from day one, but will be coming, um, that people will learn very quickly uh, not to park in this space between 7 a.m. and 10 a.m., even if a parking warden isn't able to be on, on site. Um, so I'd like to ask you for your support for this, um, for this change to support our cycling community and just trial some different hours. Thank you. And um, Deputy Mayor Free is going to second. Do you wish to speak? Yes, just very quickly. Um, we, <clears throat> I do think this is uh, maybe a little bit of a sensible compromise given that we have heard that cyclists would have liked um, it to be 24-7. I don't believe that the current time that we can do that bearing in mind some of the other needs that we've heard about as well. And we are, you know, obligated to try and do the best for everybody. But um, initially, as Councillor Conde has indicated, we probably would have liked 6 a.m. to 10 a.m., which would give some ability for those new fares. Um, you know, it's a, a little bit about the buses as well as the bikes. Um, the Regional Council is offering um, discounts now for trips that start before 7, so we would have ideally liked to have um, perhaps given those people a super bus right into the city for the efficiency of that as well as the um, cost savings. But it is about enforcement and it is um, about being realistic. Um, I think the 7am to 10am is, is worth doing and part of the population we do need to think about too is at the moment um, people who are retired do have gold cards and they can't use them until after nine. So again, giving that pop section of the population an efficient trip um, to wherever they might want to go where they can use their gold cards. So look, as um, it's been said, it is a trial and we, we just, I think this does make sense on a variety of levels, so I do urge you just perhaps consider this. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Rush and then Councillor Matthews. I, I just would like to hear from officers. Um, um, your recommendation was not to go to 10. I'm just wondering, is there any feedback from submitters that you might want to share for us with us that might you know, be relevant? My understanding is the recommendation not to go to 10 was just around consistency across the city. The recommendation of not to go before 7 was about um, people being around to actually tow vehicles. They don't start till 7. Um, but the, the 10 o'clock thing was more to do with consistency, that's all. Yeah, so no substantive reason not to, to, to consider this. Okay, thanks. 
Thank you. Councillor Matthews. Uh, kia ora koutou. I'll speak to the, um, the substantive at the same time. Um, very briefly, I just want to thank um, councillors Condi and Deputy Mayor Free for putting this up. I love a good evidence-based amendment. And um, you'll like that, Sean, I know. Um, and uh, like just to, and I do like the signal it sends, I, you know, have, uh, in terms of the submissions we had last week, I, I don't love um, the compromises that we've already made, um, but they understand that this is kind of the business of trying to trying to get these done and working with the community and making sort of gradual changes. Um, so um, I like the uh, signal that this sends that we do think it's important to keep um, uh, this route as, as safer and um, clear for um, public and active transport as much as we can. And I guess I'm just kind of interested in the meme that's kind of going around that all the council is kind of does or cares about is bike lanes. And I find that really interesting and difficult and misleading actually, because uh, it's not true in terms of the money that we spend on things. And it's also not true uh, in terms of the road space and how we allocate it. So it's just not factually a thing, but we are trying to uh, make quick moves to provide safe, um, low carbon transport options for everyone. Um, and so we are trying to do this in a way that uh, continually changes, meets the need of communities, but actually gets these options in place for safety because the reality is cities around the world are making these changes. Many have already made them. And um, I mentioned in the um, spatial plan in terms of our issues with maths and geography, and it's the same here. You know, we have more and more people who are wanting to move through our city, but we actually just can't fit uh, everybody in a private vehicle because of the room that it takes up, apart from the climate and safety issues. So, um, you know, we have to, uh, people are doing it anyway, but we need to make it safer for them to, to mode shift. And we really, you know, what we are doing is not different or special uh, around the world. This is just what is happening as cities have to accommodate more people and accommodate their transport choices. So I want to thank officers for their work getting us to this point and um, keen to keep it seeing, keep seeing it roll along. Thank you. Thank you. Any other speakers? Councillor Foon. Um, yeah, I'll speak to the substantive at the same time. Oh, and, oh, oh. So, was just can we just clear this? Is, it, is that okay? Just a just tidily, and then you can. I'll remind you. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah, yeah, yep, yep, yep. Councillor Day will. Yep. Okay. Um, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. I know. I know. After Councillor Day. So, uh, any other speakers? Do you need a right of reply? No. Okay. If we can vote, and we'll take a division on it, just in case it's contentious. So that is in favour, um, so it passes with one opposed. Thank you very much. Right, now back to the substantive. Uh, Councillor Day, then Councillor Foon. Oh, oh, sorry, you had put your, oh, sorry, I thought you'd put your hand up and then you didn't want to talk. Okay, I'll put you back on the list. That's all good. Complex people. Um, <clears throat> so um, I just want to um, acknowledge, um, uh, begin by acknowledging um, Patrick Morgan's um, submission today. Um, <laughs> that uh, around the, the um, fact that 75% of submitters supported um, what was being proposed um, through the process. And um, that actually, he also um, commented that he didn't really, he didn't recognise a lot of the submitters. So I think, you know, he's, he's right that this isn't just the um, cycle lobby group. This is actually people who use this space in many different ways. Um, and I think it's interesting, there's been quite a bit of focus on data um, in the question time today. And I think, it, um, as has been pointed out by Councillor Paul during the question time, that we've got to be really careful we don't let current data 
data um, lock people out who currently um, don't see this as a, a possibility um, for them to uh, use this um, area as a cycle space. Um, I have a family member who used to cycle into the city from Kurori and stopped because of safety issues, so I know that, um, that this will be the beginning of making a difference that means that people will feel they can, they can cycle. Um, and I do acknowledge the, the fact that the staff are trying to find a way through that um, brings the community with us, which I think is really important in that you know, we're, we're looking at doing this in the way that we can build it to being that connected network that we need. Um, and I just want to comment, um, Councillor Young was talking about livability and, um, and what, this was, what this was really about, and I think it's okay to have, um, have make changes in our city that actually meet multiple needs. So it is about climate change, it is about bus usage, it is about cycling, and it is about livability. Um, and you know, as, a, as a family who have used the um, gardens um, for Garden Magic Time, um, we often find that there aren't enough parks anyway and we have to find other ways of getting to the gardens. It's a big area in there and there's no way that you can ever have enough parking for everybody to arrive by car. Um, and I think it's important that we do support our communities to um, find other ways to move around so that the people who do need the car parks can access those and we need to probably do a bit of work around um, you know, supporting people to make those choices. Because um, when we are moving around um, for recreational activities, you know, building in a bit of time for movement is also important. And I think it's important to acknowledge that livability in the 2000s is very different to the last century in that, you know, each century it has changed. We're probably actually going to be going back to a, a, a different way of moving that actually people were quite comfortable with, um, with generations ago. Um, and I think uh, the bus service, um, you know, we've watched it uh, improve um, people's livability. The accessibility gains have been huge on our bus service in recent times. Um, and I think, you know, we're responding by um, putting these platforms in, which helps with that accessibility, which is really great. And we need to do what we can to support the regional council to, um, to improve accessibility, because actually, arguably, in that particular area, being dropped off by bus very close to the gate of the Botanic Gardens is more accessible than having to park. 10, 10 minutes down the road, get out of your car awkwardly, um, whereas a bus will actually assist you to get off and then be able to spend your time at the gardens. And I also want to respond, um, the other day some questions were asked around, um, you know, how does it work for families? You know, it's a 21 minute walk from the top of the cable car. We actually used to um, specifically have outings with the kids where the transport, the way of getting there was actually part of the excursion. The kids loved going on public transport. It's a social event for children. And um, as a family, it actually made it much less stressful having to worry about the parking side of things at the other end and still possibly having to walk a long way. Um, so I think, you know, this is actually um, about making our city livable for people in many different situations and actually all we're doing is asking that we share space, um, you know, better for all modes of transport and I think this is a great, it's a great uh, solution that our staff have worked on and I also really want to acknowledge the fact that they have listened so carefully to our community and have iteratively worked with the community along the way and sometimes people could think that they haven't been heard because the, the changes have been made in the process and I think this is one of those situations and I can say that I've definitely observed that happening. Kia Thank you Councillor Foon. Um, kia ora, yeah and um, just to go, thank you, Councillor Day, for those excellent comments. Um, I really want to mihi to our staff because I know that they have really um, engaged with the organisations and people along this route. And, um, and it was actually really disappointing to hear this morning that... Um, the Thorndon residents have said that there was a failure to build common understanding when we know that this has been out since the end of last year. So I just really want to acknowledge our, our team's work here to bring the community along with us and make all of those changes to help accommodate the needs of, of the community. Um, I do think also that this is an iterative process and so in the long term, as Councillor Paul pointed out, that gold-plated version is coming. This is a stage, and this is what we need for the city to move forward. Um, and I actually really want Wellington residents and businesses to know that space on our streets needs and must be shared by all users, not for storing vehicles. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Fitzsimons. 
Uh, thank you. I just want to um, start by acknowledging all the submitters, including those who oppose this. I understand that change is hard for people. I also want to acknowledge the staff doing this work. It's not easy. It must feel like you're going two steps forward, one step backwards all the time. But I was reflecting that we are making progress. Yesterday, um, someone who will be familiar to you, Julianne Genta's partner, Peter, left home around the same time as I did, and that we live nearby each other, and our children both go to the same ECE centre. Him on his cargo bike with two babies, or two children, a toddler and a baby in the front, and me with my kids in my car. We arrived at the ECE centre at around the same time. That is progress in Wellington. It is now realistic for cycling children to ECE centres um, it is now realistic for that to happen, and it's realistic because we are starting to make cycling a convenient mode of transport. And I want to echo what um, Councillor Day said around um, making a family outing out of public transport. My five-year-old daughter has got her birthday on Sunday, and she has been given as one of her presents a trip on a cable car with a school friend of hers. And I thought, what a lovely, meaningful present. Um, but I guess I did want to reflect that I don't think this council has always got the process right on cycleways, and more change will be needed, but this is the carbon reducing mode of transport that we need in our city. And this vote today is about being on the right side of history. Wellington is playing catch up when it comes to bike lanes, and this is just another step towards introducing more low carbon transport options, and I'm really pleased to be able to support it. Thank you, Councillor Rush. Uh, yeah, I was making an amendment to uh, bring in a safer speed limit outside Rosney School. Is, could that be brought up, please? No, Councillor Rush. And I'm going to actually do 21.10. Well, no, it's it's completely out of okay, scope. So okay, so... Well, I can I can put this to the committee if they want safer speeds outside Rosney School. No, you can't. I can. It's, it's, no, no, you can't. It's my ruling. Can I have you will need understanding orders. I can put it to a vote. I need three quarters of the... To, to challenge my ruling. I'm ruling yep. it out of scope, so you'll have to um, uh, vote to challenge that. Yep. And can I speak to it? No, because it's out of scope, so you have to challenge the ruling. Or can I speak to my challenge? No, no. Can no, I have some order. advice, please? This I don't get to speak to it. No. Oh, let's no. not bother. Come let's on, let's move, move on then. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tried. I'm reading the room. Yeah, exactly. So do you really want to challenge my ruling? Oh, Read progress. the standing orders. All right, let's move on. Can I, can can I speak to the standard then? Deputy Mayor Free. Oh, okay. I thought you guys wanted to go home. I'm trying to <laughs> you. <laughs> you have to read the standing orders before you do your watchdog <laughs> thing. So, um, <laughs> thank you. I too want to really thank the staff because I've been on the front line um, with, site, you know, with communities trying to work this stuff out and I know that can be pretty um, tough at times but I think um, now I know we've got such great staff <laughs> it's, um, I know we're in such good hands when it comes to these conversations so thank you. Um, what I, of course I support cycling so that's a given um, so I really want to focus on a couple of other things number one the buses um, you know we've had it, our submitters have mainly said to us a, a lot of them they want to still be able to get to the botanical gardens they're worried that this is going to stop their access and I want to talk about um, the fact that actually that number two bus is amazing and the regional council the relationship now between us and the regional council is such so different from last triennium and I have a lot of confidence that they're actually taking on board the fact that people are going to have to use the bus in different ways because it is going to be harder to park um, and they have now they're talking about kids going free on the weekends they're, they've got those integrated tickets so if your number two bus doesn't go past your house it doesn't matter you get on your bus and you swap to a number two and you'll go right to the straight to the gardens and for myself um, my husband and I actually took a trip to the gardens we were able to sit next to each other and hold hands <laughs> which is something we'd never have been able to do and chat to each other which is something we would of course not be able to do if one of us was driving and the other one was in the front passenger seat. <laughs> so um, you know there are actually lots of advantages about um, public transport. My ninth birthday I took um, with five with five cents all my friends on a bus from Newtown to the cable car. Yes that was the price in the day and we um, did a bottle fundraising to get that money and we all went on a bus and some of my friends at age nine hadn't really done that and we went up the cable car and then came home for a birthday. So, you know, kids do love um, 
public transport, I think we just need to make people really reassured that it can work. But I also have a suggestion, and we do, we have heard from people who, for one reason or another, the public transport genuinely won't work. They won't get on a bike. And I do like this idea that we could be using our valuable car parking space a bit more creatively. And a couple of suggestions have come to mind, which I'm not moving formal amendments about, but I did say I'd speak to. One is that we could set aside a couple of parks up in Anderson Park or somewhere like that, where um, you have to be a group to park there. And a Fano Park, um, you know, and that, reaches that objective of moving more people with fewer vehicles while still acknowledging that some people are going to come in a private vehicle. The other one that was suggested was actually bookable parking, where if you've got a particular need to, um, to bring a family member who can't come any other way, you actually could go online and reserve a park for a given time um, because you know that you're going to be wanting to take that family member somewhere special. And I have been in the situation of having disabled family members and I know that um, you know you can be really limited in the places you can take them if you don't know for certain um, that you're going to be able to achieve the trip you need to achieve in their time frame, which often that time frame is quite short because they have a lot of complex needs. So you really need to know it's going to work smoothly. So I think there's a lot we can do to respond to our submitters' concerns. They are genuine concerns. There's a lot we can still do to respond to those while we move forward with the changes we need to make for a modern city that's actually allowing people to be healthy, active, it's um, climate friendly and that we're getting around in ways that don't use as much carbon. Um, we're also making a quieter, cleaner city and we're also getting space for the things that we want to have space for. And I do just want to acknowledge Tanya Ali. I was so proud that we were able to provide that service, that we were able to see her and her um, interpreter and hear from her and she was so eloquent even though done through that medium but the way that she sort of talked about her aspirations for the city in terms of signage, in terms of it being beautiful, I haven't heard us aspire to that recently um, and just people friendly. Thank you Tanya, belatedly. Um, it was a lovely submission and you know there, were a lot, there was a lot there that to aspire to. So that's it from me. I will certainly be supporting this proposal. I'm excited by it. Look forward to seeing it go in. Thank you. Any other speakers? Oh, sorry, Councillor Rush. Just wondering, do we still have a sign language interpreter? Um, no, I don't. I'm just going to speak more slowly if, if there is. No? Online? No. No, okay, good. All right, well, let's just talk about climate change. So over the break... Um, um, you talked about climate change, um, Madam Chair. I read The Weather and Climate of Australia and New Zealand by Andrew Sturman. Uh, and I can tell you that we're in the third season of uh, a La Nina. And if we weren't getting a lot of rain, that would be real climate change. OK, just, just for the record. Um, I also think that uh, cycling is inefficient mitigation. Uh, it costs an awful lot. We don't actually save much carbon. We would be better off paying money to plant trees. Uh, I am curious about the safety aspects. That's why I asked about the crash data. All the crash data I've seen uh, shows that accidents gen generally happen at intersections, not on nice straight lengths of road, such as uh, along Glenmore. Um, and the latent demand, well, I can tell you that Brooklyn Hill before pandemic uh, had 3.8 thousand people. Um, sorry, in July in 2019, 3.6 thousand people. July 2022, 2.9 thousand. Now, we do know that the pandemic's had an effect on that, but what we aren't seeing is a massive uplift, a doubling and so forth that uh, we would hope to have seen. So I've got question marks about that. Uh, thirdly, I thought, sorry, fifthly, um, about priorities. Should we be fixing our pipes? And uh, I'm going to change the narrative here because I thought Councillor Matthews made a very good point. Actually, our long-term plan had a massive, overwhelming plug for water. And, uh, and that gets lost in the conversation. I heard Heather Duplessy Allen trying to get the CEO of Wellington Water, Colin Crampton, to, 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 to uh, say that the council had not funded Wellington Water to do its job. And to his credit, he said, no, councils have funded us. <sighs> sorry. Yeah, okay. Anyway, that was to his credit. Anyway, so 
I also thought Councillor Matthews made a really good point about room taken up by cars. And, you know, I did vote for the bike plan, uh, the network. I also voted for the extra budget. And I do think, and I said at that time, that, you know, cycleways are here, they're here to stay. And I think that we can actually put a lot more people commuting into Wellington if we have cycle lanes than, uh, than if we have cars. Uh, even though I think the... I think that I think we, we will have cars and they will be electrified and at 2050 they will make a much bigger difference to our carbon footprint than cycleways. But nevertheless, you can put a lot of more people in the cycleways uh, than you can in um, the normal roads. I also think the officers have done officers have done an enormous amount of work and I do want to acknowledge that and I know that uh, a lot of members of the community would have liked the officers to be even more flexible but I think we've they've done a pretty good job so I'm at this stage mine to support this oh. I never quite understand your voting <laughs> and I just sorry uh, just I just want to say T two very quick comments. Councillor Paul, your thing about having a humble approach. We are trying to, to the community, we're trying to learn. All of us, even as councillors, trying to learn about how to design a good cycleway. And Councillor Young, you and I have a different vision of what a, a livable Wellington is like. It's not full of polluting cars. <laughs> right, if we can all vote. Does anyone want to take anything separately? Take number five. Okay, yep, that's fine. So we'll do number one, one to four first, please. Yes, it, yes, it will have a division. Yep, that's fine. Just so you can tell your voters, Councillor Young. Can we get it up on the screen, thanks? <laughs> oh, sorry, back up. We'll put it back up on the screen. <laughs> sorry, it, it, can oh, Councillor see that on? Oh, yep, okay, cool. Okay. <laughs> Simon, are you voting? And Liz. <laughs> that vote's all unanimous. Um, now let's hope the same for number five. Number five. <laughs> Might surprise me, Councillor Young. Waiting on Ms. Kelly and Councillor O'Neill. No. <laughs> what did you say? Right, so that, <laughs> no, Councillor Cover, you didn't surprise me. All right, so that's 13 in favour, two against. Thank you very much, colleagues. Now, Mayor Foster, you messed around with my self imposed deadline. We're now going to take lunch. Um, a few people have. Is it, is, do you think we can? Okay, forward program. We can. Hey, um, we can. Um, um, Madam Chair, yeah. Madam Chair, I think I voted the wrong way. Yeah, I was a bit surprised. So that's fine. We'll change your vote. I was a bit like. Thank oh. you. You've seen the light, Councillor. We've just we've got two minutes to get through. Okay, else. forward program. Right. Um, so forward program. If I can ask Liam to introduce that, um, it has got amendments because things have changed since this agenda was published. Yeah. Yes, thanks, Madam Chair. So we're just updating that now with um, uh, some new items. This is a result of, well, changing circumstances, really. There's the um, there's a couple of reports that have been requested that are reappearing, and there's items coming back um, that have been lifted off the table, in particular speed management report as well. So those were just, I went through the, the action tracking. I was like, oh gosh, we have got still got a few things to cover off. Um, right, so uh, is that all you That's need all. to say? Right, um, are there any questions of Liam? Yes, Mayor Foster, Councillor Calvert. Yeah, just on the speed management, um, have we got the further advice then from um, 
Waka Gatahi that they were looking for. Yes. Yeah, so just to clarify, we'll, through you, Madam Chair, we'll, um, it, it's the same paper that's left on the table. We'll be doing an addendum advising on the recently released criteria um, guidelines from right Waka okay. and then a bit of an update on the regional collaboration work. Okay, cool, thanks. Thank you, Councillor Calvert. Um, yes, just wondering what impact this might have given. It's just a, um, all voting papers are out there, and so voting basically starts in our elections. Whether it's appropriate to have papers that um, are looking at um, changing, adopting, um, consulting on key policy and principles. Thanks. Yep, through you, Madam Chair. Um, this relates to the new town to City Sockaway? Um, and uh, well, probably more important, uh, let more about the speed management one. So, um, look, that particular one in the officer's report uh, was of uh, medium significance, and it's because it's just providing guidance for the officers to start the work on the plan. The plan itself will be considered by council, both in draft and final form in the new triennium. Um, Newtown to City Cycleway, both hearings and uh, bike and bus improvements relate again to a medium significance item that's um, not um, considered to be uh, important for the uh, caretaker period. Or um, but surely um, changing speeds around the entire city with a budget of up to $44 million is not, surely that is um, um, more than medium on the significance and engagement policy. Uh, as I said, it's, a, it's to provide guidance for officers to go and do the work and then report back for those key decisions. Um, so. And as I said, because it's considerable, um, it consider, you know, for the policy changes mm. in a few weeks before an election um, and you wanting advice from a, an outgoing council, I'm just, ch I'm just asking you, are you really sure that this is appropriate um, given the nature of what could be in that paper? But you may want to take some consideration on that, but I, I you know. Oh, I'm happy to take it's, it. It's, it's, oh. not, uh, it's not normal in local government for such a decision to come to council um, at the time that voting papers are released and prior to the end of the triennium. Well, look, look, I'm happy to look at it. The current advice from officers, though, is that it's just looking for guidance from council for the work to commence um, and what parameters the count this council might be interested in, um, in setting so we can take that to the community and consult with them. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Frey. Um, that original paper, you were looking for a steer, and we went through a very uncomfortable process where we put up a whole lot of amendments, and then someone suggested What's that. What's your question? My question is coming. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a very My long. question is, I wonder if you've got some different amendments, you know, a different recommendations, given that you've had that steer, and there was quite a bit of feedback given through amendments that were put on the table. Um, I would be most uncomfortable with the same paper coming back to us because there were issues and that's what we were trying to signal. Look, I can't comment in the addendum report attached to it, but the papers lying on the table need to be lifted and discussed and debated again. So, um, but there may be amendments that other councillors may have in mind for um, for the work. But at this moment in time, I, I haven't actually had the report in front of me to, uh, to read. Um, to be really frank, I was imagining we'd have a slightly different paper in front of us if it was going to come back. So, the papers, so as you've heard from Mr. Hodgetts, the, um, the Waka Kotahi guidelines have come through and they'll be reflecting on those. It's not what I'm asking. That's what I'm asking is has, will there in that addendum paper? No, I don't think it's inappropriate at all because it goes somewhat to the heart of what um, uh, Councillor Calvert. Okay, okay, we'll leave that for debate. We'll um, that's that for debate. exactly what I was told, that that paper was there on the table for us to give them a steer. No, 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 it was to come back, it was to come back today, actually. No, the paper that we actually received on the day we received it. Okay. Come back today. All right, okay, any other I'm questions? I'm not we'll comfortable leave, we'll leave with the process yeah, 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 at the debate. moment. Debate, right, any other questions? Right, okay, I'm just going to quickly introduce it. So. Um, I do find those action tracking papers really difficult to read, but I did pick up some things that we did need to cover off, including your more point uh, paper, Deputy Mayor. I know that you're very um, concerned about that. So we've just um, put some things on here. Yeah, and it was supposed to be reported back, including that um, that cycleway safety in, uh, around Curtis Street, which I 
you and I have been exercised about, as well as I'm sure other councillors. So there are a few things that needed to be done. You've been told about the process around the Newtown Cycleway, so I'm grateful to officers that they've got on with that and they have um, briefed us on the process around that, including with the um, the appellants. Um, the, and just lastly on the speed management paper, it was supposed to come back today. It, it has to come back. That, that was the decision of committee. Um, I don't know how many people have read the Waka Kotahi guidance, but it certainly accommodates what was um, allowed, um, and um, there will be plenty of chances to um, debate that in full. Um, could I have a seconder? Thank you, Councillor Condy. Do you wish to speak? Just quickly to say that I was one of the people who voted to lay that speed management paper on the table, and I only voted that way on the assumption that it would come back this term, um, because we agreed that it was supposed to come back to this meeting. Um, so I think it is very important that the decision of the committee was for that paper to come back, not for it just to go away into some distant future. So I think it's important that we follow through on that. Deputy Mayor. Yeah, look, um, I am going to labour this point because that, in my mind, that is quite an important and significant paper for the city. I am happy to see it come back, but I don't want to just have the same paper on the table again. Uh, and I really am expecting there's going to be some significant movement on it to uh, cover off the issues that were raised about the bus network, um, you know, and um, the working with our partners and actually the working with the schools and the whole process that we're going to go through um, needs to be clarified and, and um, that is what I'm hoping to see. Um, yeah, Because my vision is certainly for, and I'll state this now, an efficient bus network through our city. And, and you know, that, that means, uh, and that means actually some of those routes need to have other solutions apart from just having a lower speed if they're a bus route. Um, okay, yep, 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 okay. Uh, Councillor Day. Uh, I will support um, the, what's on the recommendations um, and just note that um, when a paper is laid on the table, the process is not that it gets rewritten. We've laid it on the table as it is. We then need to amend it and as we're, hear, as we're hearing, we're going to get some more information with it, which is a response. So you can't ask for the paper to be changed. That's not part of our processes. So I think just be, no, there's not... A, we don't need to have backwards and forwards, but I think it's just acknowledging our standing orders are very clear on how a paper that's been laid on the table is, so we're just going to follow that. OK, any other speakers? Um, Councillor Calvert. Um, I, will, um, I will be voting for these because basically number two is a noting um, and things can change, but I would um, counsel officers strongly to look at what's on our agendas from, well, for this month and next month, just to ensure that um, we are, um, we're, we're not wasting time, but also that we are respecting the democratic process. And it's not normal for um, significant papers to come before um, this council, in particular in the, in the few weeks before an election. And so, um, as I said, is I hope officers will um, um, consider that point. Thank you. Mayor Foster. Yeah, can I just say that um, I think I've been on more um, end of trainiums than anybody else has here, and quite regularly it is the, it is the, it is the case that um, you know, we can't stop the work of the council yep. for a period of time before. I had one officer who said to me, we don't think council makes any decisions between the end of June and October. And I said, you've got to be kidding. Who told you that? Um, you know, because uh, I mean, a three-year three term is a very short period of time anyway. Um, one, one day I hope that we'll actually have the conversation as a nation about a, a different term for central and local government. But, but a three-year term is a very short period of time, and if you take three months out, and then you think that it's probably a couple of months to put, to put a council back together again afterwards, you've lost, you've lost nearly a sixth of an entire term. That is not an efficient way of doing business. And I do recall um, that the day before uh, I was elected, that was the day that the council made a significant decision, and it sold the bus company. So decisions get made right up to the last minute. Okay, thank Look what you, thank you for that, that useful point. <laughs> right, are we ready to vote? Okay, if we can vote, please. Sorry, my computer's frozen. <laughs> Try and fix it. <laughs>
Oh, it is carried unanimously. Thank you very much. And then the action tracking paper. Uh, Take it as read. Any questions? Any questions on the action tracking? Uh, uh, no. All right. So if we vote, uh, Councillor Paul will second. I've got nothing to say because I've done that in the previous paper. Right. Ken. Councillor Rush, I am trying to help you with your Roseneath issue in the appropriate place. That's right. <laughs> yeah. The two men, two men in the room today, have been difficult. <laughs> Please uh, vote uh, on we're not talking, We're not tracking. talking, just during the vote, just hang on a tote. You're nearly there and then you can have lunch. Oh, sorry. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> Nicola? Thank you, councillors. That passes unanimously. Tēnā kua mutu te hui e tu mō te karakia.